echoes of a miracle. The fable begins with its hero, a spectator. He watches as the supporting players set the early tone. In the top of the first, the A's Paul Bunyan is hit by a pitch. In the bottom half, Oakland quickly retaliates. The veteran umpire Doug Harvey warns both benches. And then an early and unlikely hero emerges for the Dodgers. Dodger Stadium was wild, but so was Tim Belcher. He loaded the bases in the second, and Jose Canseco made him pay for it. And there's a drive to center. Back goes Shelby to the wall. It is gone. Grand slam home run for Jose Canseco. And still, the heroes sat and watched as the Dodger bullpen kept it close. Canseco went down on strikes in the eighth, and now the stage was set for a replay of the final act from the natural. Only this time, the role of Roy Hobbs would be played by Kirk Gibson, not Robert Redford. as if the cheers from last night's ninth inning, a finish that left even Hollywood gasping for breath, are still reverberating around Dodger Stadium. And yet here we are, minutes away from game two. Hi, everybody. Bob Costas, and I'll be joined shortly by Marv Albert. The pitching pairing, Oral Hershiser, who won 23 during the regular season for the Dodgers and, of course, won the pennant clincher against the Mets only a few days ago. He goes tonight trying to give L.A. a 2-0 lead. He'll be opposed by Storm Davis, 16-7 for the year for Oakland. Kirk Gibson's status, same as last night. He can't start. He is available for pinch hitting duty. The lineups otherwise, besides the pitchers, are the same with one exception. Ron Hassey, rather than Terry Steinbach, will start start at catcher for the Oakland A's. And now, when we come back, Marv Albert will join us, and he'll talk with the man who threw the pitch to Kirk Gibson last night, and with Gibson himself, as the World Series pregame show continues. NBC Sports presents the World Series, an inside look. Brought to you by Ryder. We're there at every turn. And by Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. into McManus. And then it all kind of came together. There's no telling what you can do. Okay, McManus. Go. Especially when you have somebody who really believes you can do it. Be all that you can be in an edge of light in the army. You 
You know, if I've discovered one thing from driving this new Mazda 929, it's this. Not only does it measure up to the great cars of the world with its luxury and quiet, it more than measures up when you introduce it to your favorite piece of road. The new Mazda 929, a high-performance luxury sedan, the Mazda way. Welcome back to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. We close in on game two of the World Series. Coming off last night's classic, a true Hollywood finish, starring an ailing Kirk Gibson, who provided a highlight that will go down forever in World Series lore. Locker in the Dodger clubhouse, a sign that says Roy Hobbs, and on several occasions, one being last night, the natural Roy Hobbs was Kirk Gibson as he pulled off the ultimate athletic fantasy. Well, it means nothing other than it's a, to me it's a fictional character that was uh, uh, basically created uh, for a movie script, and uh, what I did last night is not fictional, it's fact. Do you have a sense of the storybook ending that? Uh, that you brought forth last night. I'm glad I was the guy up there to do it. Uh, I've been through a lot of trials this year and uh, have uh, a lot of luck involved and very fortunate. Uh, that's why I keep up going up there and preparing myself the best I know how. And, you know, it, it looks bleak. You got Dennis Eckersley out there, who's the best there is this year. And you got me, who was uh, very handicapped at the time. And uh, again, very lucky, very fortunate, whatever. But I got the job done, and it's a moment I'll never forget. What is your status for tonight? I'm going to basically uh, be doing the same thing I did last night. I'm not going to play. Uh, you know, my injuries just don't really allow me to go out there. I'd be a detriment to the team too much in the field and really at the plate. We'll be available for a type of situation I was available uh, for last night. I didn't think I was going to be available last night, but uh, I found a way to get around it. As a, a one-time flanker back at Michigan State, people have always said you play the game of baseball with a, a football mentality. Are you ever out of control? Does that ever happen? Well, sure I am, and uh, I've been criticized before for going too far, but that's the style of play I know how. I don't play for tomorrow. I play for, for the moment. And uh, I just play very aggressively, and uh, I do what I think's best for my team. I take it all in, and what I think's best for the team. I'm a team player. I'm not into individual stuff. Uh, I was happy to be up there uh, last night and do what I did, but I was happiest for my teammates, my fans, the organization, and my family. You were quoted earlier in the season. Sporting News is saying, people say I look like a, a crazy man. That's part of my game. I want the other guy to think I'm nuts. I'm a very intense person on the field. How nuts do you want people to think you are? Well, I don't know if, that, uh, if I want to define that. Uh, all I'm really saying in that statement is I am aggressive, and um, there are certain types of plays I'm capable of making that I don't think most uh, can because of my size and because of my speed. And, uh, of course, staying within the rules, but I will uh, stretch things to the limits at time. I'll do whatever it takes to uh, get us a run or trying to win us a ball game. And the other night I, I tried to do it and ended up, uh, you know, uh, spraining my medial collateral legment. But uh, that's just the way I play. And uh, I want people to wonder about me. Uh, off the field, it's a different story. But uh, out here, I'm out here to win. On the other side of the emotional spectrum, the man who delivered the pitch to Kirk Gibson last night. As it turned out, it was the premier relief man in the Major League, Dennis Eckersley, who compiled 45 saves and then four more in the American League Championship Series. But it wasn't to be for Eckersley last night. Well, you're thinking when you have two strikes on somebody, the next pitch is going to be the last out. And uh, as soon as he went after the ball, I knew the ball was gone. You second guess the pitch that you threw? Yeah, I do now. But uh, I like to work quick, and uh, the sign that I got seemed fine with me. And uh, I tried to make a real nasty pitch with it, and I did, and I left it out over the plate. 
You've had enormous success this year, but how do you bounce back from this type of situation? What, what do you tell yourself? Well, at least I get a chance to bounce back. It's not like they won the seventh game. Uh, we've still got a lot of baseball left. Uh, this is, you know, it's easy for a player to handle success. Uh, the toughest part about uh, this game is failure. And uh, if, you know, you really find out about a person when they fail. And uh, I'll be back. Was that your lowest moment? I've never been in a World Series before. Uh, you know, it's just another game, but it's not. It's a World Series, so I'd have to say that it was my lowest moment, but uh, I've got a chance to redeem myself. And Oakland manager Tony La Russa said after the game last night he hopes the A's are in the very same situation tonight. Dodgers batting two out in the ninth, and the A's up by one. He said it will be Eckersley on the mound with the ball in his hands once again. In a moment, Bob will be back as he takes a look at the hottest ticket in Los Angeles. I got my tickets. Uh... I give Tommy Lasorda tickets. I'm a season holder. The man keeps calling me up and says, get my wife into the game. She's out by the gate now selling peanuts. Tribute to the spirit of baseball, brought to you by MCI. Proof that commitment to excellence brings out the best. Because there are places where you can't get something by just pushing a button, the MCI card can be used from any phone in the U.S. push button or rotary. So you're never out of touch, no matter where your business takes you. The MCI card, it is America's business card. If you're planning to move, you could unpack some great savings. Because now when you move yourself with Ryder, we'll enroll you in one of the country's biggest discount shopping services, absolutely free. Which means you can buy almost anything for your new home at some of the best prices around. So after you unpack, you can unwind with some great savings. Ryder, we're there at every turn. Remember the movie that let you believe in magic? Now you can believe again and again with Walt Disney's Cinderella. Available on video cassette for a limited time, the magic of Cinderella is forever. For years, IBM has made the typewriter secretaries prefer most. New typewriter, huh? Now we're introducing our Wheelwriter Series 2 family. Guess you're happy about that. We'll see. New wheel rider models can erase entire words, print in bold, even reprint from memory. So if you loved your old IBM typewriter, get ready to fall in love all over again. She likes it. The new wheel rider series 2, part of the typewriter family from IBM. As twilight surrounds Dodger Steady and the ballpark is rocking with cheers once again, the Dodger lineup is being introduced behind us. You know, as years go by, five million people or more will claim that they were here last night to see Kirk Gibson's improbable heroics. But the fact is, the ballpark holds only 56,000. And that means people will go to great lengths to get World Series tickets. Thank you for calling Murray's Kenny speaking. May I help you? Uh, we have Dodger tickets ranging anywhere from $75 and up per ticket. Troy, may I help you? What's the cheapest you have for tomorrow's game? Tomorrow's 150 apiece. Because of the Dodgers' movie script season, demand for World Series tickets has been fierce. Single seat prices soared to 750 bucks, leaving even the players a bit bewildered by it all. It's been amazing. My phone's been been ringing ever since I've, I've been home. It rings every five minutes. People are coming up and saying, hey, you know, would you happen to have any tickets for this game? And I says, hey, you guys had your chance two weeks ago to get a hold of me. 
Some of those who missed their chance sought illegal alternatives to combat scalpers. The Dodgers employed a private undercover security force to patrol the parking lot, citing offenders and confiscating tickets. Tickets proved prized possessions in part because of Major League Baseball's series ticket policy, a policy that allocates over 40,000 seats to Dodger season ticket holders, about 3,000 or so for a small general sale, and leaving just under 12,000 seats unaccounted for. Well, that ticket pie of some 12,000 is sliced and sold to the 26 clubs, to big league players, the media, corporate sponsors, and licensees. But brokers still peddled thousands of tickets. Who was willing to sell their seats? We deal with the season ticket holders, the uh, media. Uh, we deal with a lot of ball clubs. Uh, uh, sell us tickets for years. We're buying players tickets, coaches tickets, we're buying uh, uh, season ticket holder tickets. Somehow or another they funnel through and they come out. And that's how we're getting them. And Marv, it should be pointed out that while ticket scalping on the grounds of the stadium and under some other circumstances is illegal, ticket agencies are legal in Los Angeles. They can buy the tickets and sell them at a premium. I know your phone, however, has been ringing at all hours of the day and night. And Bob, I wish you would stop uh, calling me and asking me those baseball questions. You know, it's enough. I'm, I'm a desperate and lonely man. And without further ado, let us go to, what's the name of the PA man? Nick Nixon. First, I thought it was Norm. It's Nick Nixon. He's the PA man. It's about time for the national anthem. Nick? Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the home plate area. Tonight's colors are being presented by representatives of the Los Angeles Police Department. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise as we honor America with our national anthem to be performed tonight by singing sensation Take Six. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous high or the after we check with Garrick Utley, who has NBC News at this hour. NBC News at this hour, I'm Garrick Utley. Democrat Michael Dukakis said today he's an underdog on the last leg of the presidential campaign, but he predicted he will be celebrating election night. Vice President George Bush said he will go the extra mile to fight hard in the closing weeks. U.S.-sponsored planes are continuing to bring food to starving refugees in the Sudan. Washington and Manila have reached a two-year agreement for the continued operation of our military bases in the Philippines. The price tag, close to $1 billion. The National Guard has joined whale rescue teams in the waters off Point Barrow, Alaska. Three California gray whales are trapped in the thickening ice of the Arctic Ocean, and time is running out to save them. More news later on this NBC station. Monday, it's an all-new Al. I suppose you think you're clever. And it's all-new Hogan. How do I look? He just looks so darn grown up. Then how could a respected judge have two wives and two families living two miles apart for 19 years? Double standard. After Alf and the Hogan family, Monday. 
When it comes to doing business overseas, you gotta know how to get it over there. You gotta span the globe. You gotta put spin on the ball. You gotta know foreign relations most of all. You gotta know the customs. You can't afford to be stopped at the border. You gotta make things happen when you get your customer's order. This reminder from Federal Express that it's not just a package. It's your business. Metro traffic reports on Today in L.A., mornings at 6.30 on 4. The 1988 World Series is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste. It's as real as it gets. By Volkswagen. Experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. And by Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper bottlers throughout the USA. There's a heat wave as we start the fall classic here in Los Angeles. Temperatures in the 90s today as we await the start of game two of the 1988 World Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola, and like everybody in the United States and maybe around the world, still in shock over the home run by Kurt Gibson, had to rank up there as one of the most memorable. The one I remember until last night was Carlton Fisk in the 75 World Series because Cardboard hit a dramatic pinch hit home run and then Fisk comes up and the great shot that we have of him going down the line dancing and trying to keep it fair and all that and the crowd reaction. But even that, I mean, in Boston, I remember how they were cheering and John Kiley even played on with Christian sh soldiers, I believe. But last night it was almost the same thing as far as the drama. One of the things, I guess, if you had to put a label on a home run, I would have to say the Kirk Gibson home run was the most theatrical home run I've ever seen. In other words, we looked in the dugout for him in the ninth inning. He wasn't there. Gibson had ice on his knees, and when he saw we were looking for him in the dugout, he said, I'm coming out there. And then when he did finally walk out, the crowd goes crazy, and he hits a 3-2-2 and two, two out game-winning home run. If that isn't theatrics, as Jim Murray said, it looked like an old Warner Brothers movie. John Wayne, Ram Five. <laughs> and now we pick up again with Storm Davis and Oral Hershiser, who has been uh, incredible, and we'll find out about game two. So we'll get to the starting lineups and have a lot more, all coming up right after this. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filter one. Can you draft anyone? Thanks. Not a ton. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth draft taste oh. hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization, oh. we've got it down cold. Oh, cold filtered yeah. more genuine draft. It's as real as beer gets. The Cyclone. The Whip. The hurricane. Some call Air Lacine a test track. To us, it's an amusement park. And when a car can handle the rides here, we give it a special name. We call it a Volkswagen. German engineering, the Volkswagen way. When it comes to doing business in faraway lands, you gotta know your way through the jungle. You gotta earn your stripes. You gotta bridge the distance. You can't afford to bungle. You gotta snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Now is no time to beat around the bush. You gotta help your customers get through customs. They don't want you sitting on your tush. This reminder from Federal Express. 
that it's not just a package. It's your business. Be there. Again. And again. The official 1988 World Series video. Relive the best of the 88 series and go behind the scenes for exclusive footage not shown on TV. To order, call 1-800-237-6700. The preceding message sponsored by NBC and Major League Baseball. The jewel at his Dodger Stadium, seated amongst the hills and the mountains. You notice the mist in the background. That is not the famous Los Angeles smog. They, because of the unusual heat, the marine air comes in and they have a little collision and you get some fog. And that's what they had on the beach. You couldn't see 50 feet on the beach here today, but it is a beautiful day downtown in the area of Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers have just now taken their defensive stations, a capacity crowd of just around 56,000 in the ballpark. And in a moment, we will get underway. Everyone in town, of course, still talking about the drama and the home run by Kirk Gibson. But as a professional job, that was yesterday, and they now go to work today. Here's the visiting Oakland A's, and it'll be Carney Lansford leading off at third base with Dave Henderson in center. Field and Jose Canseco in right. Dave Parker will be in left field. Mark McGuire will be at first. Ron Hassey behind the plate. They also get an extra left-handed bat in the lineup. Glenn Hubbard at second. The switch hitter Walt Weiss at shortstop and the pitcher Storm Davis. In the background, as Oral Hershiser loosens up, organist Nancy Hefley is playing a song she's been using for the last part of this year. It is a great song from a great musical, Les Miserables, and it's Master of the House, and he has been Master of the House. He certainly has. His record speaks for itself, but one of the things I really like about uh, Oral is the way he prepares himself. He has a personal lap computer, and not only does he put the pitches in there, but he also puts in his mood when a particular incident base hit pitch occurs, and so he can go back and check it. I've always felt then that was so important uh, when you make that big pitch. Were you within yourself? Did you overthrow? What did you do? What was the situation? And keeping that diary like he does, he can go back and quickly check it. I, I, th I think it's really great preparation. Well, he's a product of the times, the VCRs, the television screens, the computers, and he has really put it all to work. The other night when he was off to the shaky start, he went into the Dodger room and they have a, it almost looks like a TV studio, and he just uh, put the tape on and started to fast forward it and run it back, and by golly, he got straightened out. He already received a big thrill tonight because the first pitch, the ceremonial first pitch, made by his mom and dad, Oral III and Millie Hershiser, the parents who were selected as the 1988 Parents of the Year by Little League Baseball. Now, is that a way to start the night in the World Series? I think it's great, and how proud Oral must be, and this is certainly his parents are. Simply said, if you try to pull Oral Hirschheiser in that batter's box, you're playing right in his hands. You're not going to beat him. And if you, sitting at home, plan to keep score, it'll be very easy for you to know whether Hirschheiser is on his game. Number one, there'll be a lot of strikes. And number two, a lot of ground balls. Well, here's Carney Lansford, very aggressive, first ball hitter, rarely walks, and he will provide quite a threat immediately. First ball hit, slow roller to Hamilton. Off balance throw is just in time. La Russa has come up off the, on the top step. He may come out to talk to him. Framing that is, La Russa's walking past the dugout. He's not, he's not at all happy with that call. Jeff Hamilton appeared to take too much time and made it a slower play. Let's see if he had a good grip because he didn't have much on the throw at all. Out of the glove. He can't get it out and it really almost throws a change of pace and awful close. I couldn't tell on that angle. I tell you, Stubbs made a nice play digging it out because that ball dies. He had a little trouble gripping that ball. He really, he throws it three quarters and there's a short hop. I would say he's safe on that angle. Well, a couple of things now have come true. Carney Lansford, a first ball hitter, and Hershiser got a ground ball. And now here is Dave Henderson. 
Fastball. Well, miss ball one. Last night, Henderson, a first ball hitter, had a couple of base hits because the Dodgers thought they were pitching him correctly up and in. And he fooled them. There's a strike. One and one. So we'll see if Hershiser tries to change the pattern a little bit because Henderson had a single to center and a double to right. That first single he got was a breaking ball. Sinker in there. One and two. That's the tough pitch. Waiting on deck, the big man, Jose Canseco. One out, first inning, no score as we just start out on a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. Sinker too low. That's a tough pitch for the hitter to lay off, especially with two strikes. Henderson showed a great deal of discipline to take that one. Socia will actually sit on that outside corner and, until he sees the adjustment made by the Oakland hitters, and then uh, Hershiser is known to really throw a, a high sinker, and it, run, it works like a cut fastball. And he ran that away, and he goes all the way to Henderson. As Canseco waits, last night, Oakland received a half a dozen walks, and of course the walk to Dave Stewart allowed Canseco to eventually come up and hit a grand slam. Got it. And he came inside. So after starting him at the knees and missing away, Hershiser challenged Henderson and got away with it. Baseball is a constant game of adjustments, and you can see that ball runs in, and he really ties up Henderson's arms. It looked like a big swing, but he really had already committed himself, and what a pitch by Hershiser, but that's not unusual for him. Hershiser's high in strikeouts during the year nine, and here's the big guy now, Jose Canseco, who hit one of the more memorable home runs I think I've ever seen here, fouls it away. Remember last night, the grand slam home run he hit? The velocity of the ball going out went on a straight line and actually hit the camera. Jimmy Mott, you see the dent right there where the ball hit. And Jimmy asked Jose Canseco, would you sign it for me? And there you have it. Jose Canseco, Grand Slam 88 World Series. He put a dent in the ball, in the camera, and in the game. What a player. I'd like to see that on Jimmy's mantle. One ball and one strike. Be some trophy, huh? Sure would be. <laughs> you know, another thing about Canseco we wondered about, we talked about that ferocious swing he had last night. I wanted to check his bat today as he hits a high fly ball to right center, but it's playable. Marshall is there to pick it off. We'll tell you more about Canseco's bat later on. At the end of half an inning, he's nothing. Dodgers coming up. Because the Volkswagen Fox has front-wheel drive. Because it has negative steering roll radius. Because even our least expensive Volkswagen is a Volkswagen. When our engineers blow a tire, their greatest concern. Is deciding who's going to change it. German engineering, the Volkswagen way. Hear about the used car? Hi, got a cold drink. Sure. She's a beauty. Ooh, I should get my hands on her. That's a pepper. Great. Now about the car. Car. Yes. Ah, you get your daughter. Are you busy tonight? Introducing the perfect tire for everyone. It does everything for every driver. Is it safe in the rain? Well, it's, uh, you know. Can it handle at high speeds? You mean fast? <laughs> Carry heavy loads? How heavy? Can I afford it? There's no one perfect tire for everyone. So Goodyear makes different tires for every driver, car, and condition on the American road, including the perfect tire for you. When your throat hurts, nothing beats chloroseptic. It goes to work fast. Faster than Evelyn Ashford in the 100 meter. Even faster than I can read this commercial. Give me a hot dog with everything on it. Yo, that comes with rings. Now when you want twice the Pepto, you've got it. New maximum strength Pepto-Bismol. 
The most unusual crimes, the most unusual heroes, the most unusual show of the new season. You've never seen anything like it. Premiering Friday, something is out there. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Here's the Dodger lineup with Steve Sachs at second base and Franklin Stubbs at first. Mickey Hatcher in left field, Mike Marshall in right, John Shelby in center, Mike Socia behind the plate. Jeb Hamilton at third, Alfredo Griffin the shortstop, and the pitcher Oral Hershiser. And on the mound trying to stop him, the big right-hander, George Earl Davis, but everybody calls him Storm. When his mother was expecting, she read a book and the main character was named Dr. Storm, so she wanted him to have the same qualities, consequently the name Storm. Well, I hope that doctor came from over the top because that's what he does. If he's going to get wild, he'll be wild high, and his curveball's a big downer. And he starts low and hard for ball one, one and oh. Sachs, who was hit leading off the game last night, checking in, followed by Stubbs and Hatcher. I believe that was the adrenaline pump in there because he really held on and squeezed that one. One and oh. That's in there for a strike. One and one. As Tommy Lasorda talks to Bill Russell, Bill Russell talks upstairs to Joe Ferguson, the eye in the sky, and to set defense. But right now, they don't have to worry about that. Meanwhile, Tony LaRusso, flanked by his coaches, deep in thought after that heartbreaking defeat last night. And by the way, if there's one thing I really would like to add about last night, and it has nothing to do with Kirk Gibson, here's the 1-1 pitch to Sachs. A strike. I really have tremendous admiration for Dennis Eckersley, who handled himself so well, who met with the media, answered every question asked of him. Remarkable. Remarkable. Not only did he answer the questions, he didn't play around. They said to him, do you second guess the pitch? He said, now I do. I tried to make a nasty pitch. I didn't make it, and he hit it. He told one of my favorite people, Bob Verde, the Chicago Tribune columnist, a great line. A little chopper over the mound, charging it is Hubbard. Little Glenn throws and got him. Nice play. One away. When Bob Verde was talking to Dennis Eckersley today, and he knew Denny when he played in Chicago, and Bertie said, well, how are you? And Dennis suddenly reverted to the parlance of golf. He said, well, if you're going to take an eight, you might as well do it on the first hole. <laughs> so anyway, our heartiest congratulations, a salute to Dennis Eckersley. That was remarkable. How about La Russa, who said if today's game comes to the ninth inning and there are two outs, you know, Eckersley's going to have the ball if I got a one-run lead. You can bet the house on that. Franklin Stubbs in the count 0-1. Franklin's name would be filed under the just missed category on that fly ball he hit last night. He missed by a fraction of an inch of beating Kirk Gibson to the draw. Owen to start to say this is a good mound for Davis because it's nice and high. And when you come over the top like that, it really gives the hitter the feeling that you're going uphill. And when he throws that big overhand curveball, which he's yet to throw, it really looks like an even bigger break. Fastball away, one and two. And the other thing that the slope of this mound will do, it will make you follow through because you have to go down. Fall down, sure. But Dwight Gooden has said it's his favorite mound in the league. Fastball popped in the air, foul off third and going out of play. You know, talking about the human side of a man, Storm Davis had so many problems in finding his own identity. When he went to Baltimore, I think everybody expected him to be another Jim Palmer. In fact, he even tried to copy, emulate, imitate Palmer, and it just wasn't right. And then when he went to San Diego, he and Larry Boa didn't get along at all. In fact, Boa put the put-down line of all time on Storm Davis. The Padres with the SD on their cap for San Diego, and Boa said, Davis thinks the initials on the cap mean Storm Davis. High fly ball to left field. Dave Parker, who hadn't been playing out there since June, makes the play. Storm Davis is one of those guys, too, that lives under the cloud, let's call it that. Unlimited potential, the two worst words in the English language. Here's Mickey Hatcher, and he's symbolic of this Dodger club. And here's the scouting report. Now, we've asked one manager, will have to remain nameless, a couple scouts, and they said, now, don't use my name. That is about as accurate as it gets. And a one-hopper off the glove of Carney Lansford and on out into left field. The Hatcher, a big turn, 
and now gets back. The thing about Hatcher, the crowd identifies with him because he is every man. He is awkward. He does there's nothing beautiful about his game, and everyone relates to him, which is why he's such a crowd favorite. Lansford was saying that the crowd is very rough there. Uh, Ron Say was here, and they were talking about it, and Say said, you should have played here when we had to crush Frick. And Lansford said, well, we had that in Anaheim, but he said, this is no picnic, especially if you got a third baseman who digs around there all the time. And Carney's had himself a time out there. So Hatcher at first with two out, and he certainly doesn't figure to do very much running. He never stole a base, nor was he involved in a stolen base. And with two out and the club's leading RBI man, Marshall at the plate, Hatcher figures to be pretty stationary at first base. And he's tough when he gets ahead of the pitcher, hitting 377 with 16 home runs when he's ahead. That's in there, and the count one and one. It is a very bright, shiny day. The sun splashed again all over the hills, and it's one of those days where you see mountains back of mountains, and the lights have not taken effect, although the field itself is in shade. It should be a little tough to get any kind of a jump on a good fastball on the hands and hit right into the Dodger dugout. And it almost hit Tim Cruz, who's had bad luck anyway, since he was not eligible for the playoffs or the World Series. You know, Marshall hitting 377 with 16 home runs ahead of the count. He really, it tells you something. He hits 212 with four home runs when he's behind because he's such a free swinger chasing a bad ball. One ball and two strikes. Half swing. They look at Bruce Fremming. No swing. It'll give us a moment. Derwood Merrill of the American League behind the plate. Bruce Fremming of the National at first. Darrell Cousins of the American at second. Jerry Crawford of the National at third. With Doug Harvey on the line in right. And Larry McCoy of the American League on the line in left. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball and fouled away. He really pulled the trigger in a hurry. Hit that high into the upper deck almost parallel with the third base. I mean, that's really starting that trigger. Here's a report on Mike Marshall. He certainly is the best fastball hitter. Undisciplined, he'll chase a breaking pitch. He says, I just to roll the dice. You make a mistake, he'll hit it with power. He certainly will. Two and two, fouled away. Another thing about Storm Davis, just think of the pitchers he's encountered now in his last starts. He went against Teddy Higuera twice, then he faced Frank Viola, then he went against Roger Clemens, and now he goes up against Oral Hershide. <laughs> so he's probably got that whole list memorized, Vin, ready for arbitration. Two and two. Checked on a ground foul outside of first. Marshall wasn't sure what to do. That was a good pitch down and away, and he's fortunate he fouled it. One thing about Marshall, when he's not sure, he's going to swing. You know, Keith Hernandez was saying before the league championship series that of all the Dodgers, Marshall is the one that scares him the most because when he's hot, he can hit a ball over his head and hit it out of the ballpark. There's no real way to pitch to him. But of course, if he's not hot, he will look awkward, chase a lot of pitches, and will sit down. When he is hot, he's one of those guys who, when you got two strikes on him, you're in the hole. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Hatcher at first. First inning, no score. Where did you start? And that big overhand breaking ball low, ball three. That's the big downer is the way they refer to it. In the old neighborhood, that's the one we used to call the drop. Remember the drop? That was it right there. Overhand curveball. Three and two, the count to Mike Marshall with two down. Hatcher going on the pitch. Mickey goes, fastball, got him. He foul tipped it, and Ron Hassey held on to it. No runs, a hit, a man left. At the end of an inning, no score. At UPS, we're changing the look of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. An accomplishment we feel deserves a little flag waving. UPS, we run the tighter ship in the shipping business. Read any good beer bottles lately? This one tells you that Miller Genuine Draft is the one beer that's cold filtered, not heat pasteurized. So we haven't changed the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. And you know what's the best thing about reading this bottle? It leads to a very 
happy ending. Ah. There's something new out there. For all of you, the truck for 89. The all-new Toyota 4x2 Extra Cab SR5. Now available V6 power. Real backseat space. And a new look that can only say one thing. Toyota quality. Got it all now. Toyota! Who could ask for anything more? There go those human zooms trying to get the pictures they want. Now Pentax has an IQ zoom for everyone with a built-in zoom lens so you can get the pictures you want. Pentax, the IQ zoom 70 and now the IQ zoom 60. Learning how to talk fast is one way to save on international calls. The U.S. Sprint's international long-distance sale is a better way. Save as much as 10 to 34% if you call now and switch. Harry Hamlin, Crocodile Dundee's Linda Kozlowski, Robert Loja, James Whitmore, and Stephanie Kramer in two weeks live the secret of favorite son. We go to the second inning, no score. Dave Parker, Mark McGuire, and Ron Hassey against Oral Hershiser. So the Cobra checks in in a starting role for the second game in a row and hammers it to center for a base hit. Ben, if there would be one thing, if you were scouting or giving a report on the Oakland A's, I think you would emphasize most of them are first ball, fast ball hitters. They really jump on it. Lansford, uh, Henderson, Parker, all jumping on the first ball. And the other thing that's consistent is specifically about Parker. He seems to be a much better hitter when he starts rather than a DH. So he's happy in his role so far. Here's Mark McGuire. McGuire, 0 for 3, walked twice, including once intentionally last night. He's basically an uppercutter in what we have seen of him. So if you get the ball in his wheelhouse, he will hit a towering home run. So the Dodgers will probably try to keep the ball up on him, even though Hershiser's stock in trade is to keep the ball down. Ground ball to Griffin. He feeds Sachs. He goes to stop. Double play. Did his best to try to take Sachs out of the play, and Sachs just jumped straight up in the air. And I'll tell you, that's a, quite a feat when you stop to think who's coming down. Dave Parker, watch him when he makes the pivot. Now Parker is coming. There he goes. The 515 goes right by him. Parker, in case you wonder, is 6'5 and 240, and you know you can hear him coming. Oh, if I tell you, if Sachs gets hit, he'll staple him right to the left field wall. So two down in the second inning. And now Ron Hassey coming up. Hassey finished up the ball game last night and now has a chance offensively. Vin Hershiser has gotten five outs on 13 pitches. Do you wonder why he wins all those games? A lot of strikes, a lot of ground balls. There's another one. We told you that's a sure tip off on the kind of stuff he has. So the A's are gone in the second at the end of an inning and a half. No score. You know, everyone tells me what a beautiful car my Toyota Corolla is. True. But I tell them I got my 89 Corolla because I'm completely logical. I look for reliability and quality in a car. But between you and me, I fell in love with my Corolla the first time I laid eyes on it. Rich Little for Little Debbie. I'm hungry. Real hungry. Wish I had a snack. A big snack. Something crunchy. Yes, some moist and, and creamy. What you eating there, friend? A little Debbie snack cake. Any more where that came from? Yep. <laughs> when you hit the trail, take a long Little Debbie. In the next four years, somebody is going to have to continue the arms limitation talks with Gorbachev. Somebody is going to have to find out if Gorbachev is for real. Somebody is going to have to deal with him and look him in the eye and not blink. This is no time for uncertainty. No time to train somebody in how to meet with the Russians. 
This is the time for strength and experience. This is the time for somebody who is ready on day one to be a great president. The Delta Fawcett. When it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. The washerless design makes it last and last. Delta Fawcett. We're first because we last. The product. The vehicles. The testing grounds. The results. STP oil treatment is the edge. Witness thoroughbred racing as it's never been seen before through the eyes of the world's great cameramen. Next Saturday, only on NBC Sports World. The 1988 World Series is brought to you by your Toyota dealer. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? And by Federal Express, who reminds you that it's not just a package, it's your business. Bottom of the second inning, and John Shelby, a former teammate of Storm Davis at Baltimore, hits the first pitch to Mark McGuire. One up, one away. Well, I have to believe, Ben, when you throw a curveball that big on the first pitch, even though he didn't get a base hit, Shelby was certainly looking for it because that was a big downer. I was wondering, and I've never had the experience, and of course you have, what it must be like to play in a World Series, big crowd, national television, and how you ever learn to relax. And I found out a somewhat interesting thing about Storm Davis. Storm Davis relearned a breathing technique from his pregnant wife's Lamaze class, and he uses that to relax on the mound. Foul ball. Well, when you get right down to it, that is far more important than the World Series game. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it certainly would help him. So now we know of two things. We know Storm Davis has the breathing he learned from the Lamaze, and Brian Holton sings when he loosens up. Oh, and two the count. One out, second inning, no score. I mean, I tighten up selecting a blue tie, so I don't know how they ever survive this kind of tension. Lasorda hitting instructor Ben Hines. And by the way, both clubs very, very loose today. In fact, they were both kind of, as you look at last night's one of many heroes, looking at casually at football games on television, hollering, and uh, you would think it was just another day in the ballpark, but that's five hours ago. Tell you, I, I just can't comprehend what he went through this morning when he woke up and realized what he had done last night. He took hitting early today. In other words, he took live hitting in the batting cage, not against a machine. And after taking live hitting at 1 o'clock, he still said, I can't play. He talked like he was going to be in a trainer's room for most of the game, like last night, but here he is on the bench. Two balls and two strikes to Mike Sosha. against a guy who doesn't strike out. You see Hassey move right in on him, and Storm Davis really hit the target. Hassey's kind of like his private catcher, and it is a big asset when the catcher and the pitcher work so closely. Look at Hassey move right in there and watch that ball. I mean, it is right in the glove, just absolutely dead perfect. Even if Mike hits that ball, he's just going to have a handful of toothpicks. Perfect pitch. Davis is not a strikeout pitcher. His high seven, he did that three times. But all three times he struck out seven was in the first half of the season. Here's Jeff Hamilton. Ball one. Hamilton last night, 0 for 4, struck out twice, came up in a big spot in the sixth inning and was jammed, cracked his bat, and hit into a double play. So it was all part of the educational experience. He's the one we said does not walk. It's pretty hard, really, to walk him. You just can't get the, the old expression about a Bible, Bible hitter. Bible hitter, thou shalt not pass. pass. Yep. One of the things about Davis, he gives you that slow, deliberate windup, and then here he comes. Hard and away, ball two. Two and one. I would expect the Dodgers to take a lot of pitches from Davis because he's inclined, like so many others, to fight his control. So the hitter's trying to be a little patient. Ground ball to the hole, deep in the hole, backhanded by Weiss, off balance, oh, got him, what a play. What a major league play to get that much 
on that throw while he's in midair. Walt Weiss, an outstanding play, and it's no score. It's Bell's excitement. Tattinger's October 26th. Every day, people who need to make a little more sense of a complex world... It's here. ...turn to the national edition of the New York Times. From world and national news... Greg, it's here. ...to business, to the new living arts section. It's here. Covering your home, your health, your special interests. The national edition of the New York Times. The more you need to know, the more you need the Times. Pick it up for just 25 cents daily or call for L.A. and Orange County delivery. When it comes to doing business in faraway lands, you gotta know your way through the jungle. You gotta earn your stripes. You gotta bridge the distance. You can't afford to bungle. You gotta snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Now is no time to beat around the bush. You gotta help your customers get through customs. They don't want you sitting on your tush. This reminder from Federal Express that it's not just a package, it's your business. The vice president of Cadbury Schweppes is sleeping on the job. The publisher of Cosmopolitan can barely keep his eyes open. In fact, some of the world's most successful business people are off in Never Never Land. And that's exactly where we want them. Because when it comes to business, Pan Am believes the more relaxed and rested you are up here, the better you'll do down there. Pan Am, the number one airline to Europe and more. Watch Fred Rogan's post game with Tommy Lasorda tonight. Walt Weiss, who just made that sensational play coming up, watch this play and count the steps that he has to use to get to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In midair, he has to control his body and get something on it. And he gets him in plenty of time. Perfect body control, and he had to really cover a lot of ground. Seven steps is a lot. When you talk about making a play in a hole, that's the page you would turn to. Well, you can understand, number one, why they could trade away Alfredo Griffin. You can certainly understand why he is an outstanding candidate for Rookie of the Year. Boy, can he pick it. When It'll you, be Hubbard, Weiss, and Storm Davis. Vin, I always marvel at those guys who can get in midair and control their body and get enough on the throw. Usually they'll throw big infield flies over there. That ball had pretty much on it. Well, here's a little man with big talent, made sizable contributions last night, Glenn Hubbard. Hubbard with a couple of base hits. He's a very tough out. He doesn't give you any strike zone. Ball one, one and oh. No score, third inning. Scheiser in the first two innings, six up, six down, and Lansford, Parker, and Hassey all hit the first pitch, so maybe LaRusso said something to Hubbard, hey, let's take some pitches on this guy. I would think you first ball him, and you're playing right into his hand. That's a sinker low. The other thing, of course, if you're a hitter against Hershiser, make him bring the ball up. And there are many theories on that. Move up on the plate is one that's well known, but the Oakland A's against Tommy John had uh, Baylor to explain to him you should move back. In there. And nice. You see a rookie like Walt Weiss playing in the World Series and the kid playing second base next to him. It's his first World Series experience 10 years in the major leagues for Glenn Hubbard. And you can bet Hubbard said, listen, Walt, you enjoy this one because it don't happen every year. Two and two. Big breaking ball, but it stayed up all three. Just ask Joey Amalfitano coaching for the uh, Dodgers. His first one was 1954 with the Giants in DeRocher against Cleveland. And he was on the phone with Leo DeRocher before last night's game, still calling him Skip. Yeah, and I'm sure Skipper said, Joey, you got any tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Three and two, the count. We're in the third. The lights have not taken effect yet. It's still a little tough to pick off that ball. Fastball jammed him, popped up, and Hershiser's going to catch it or try. One down. That's 
what he calls the high sinker. Now, that's almost contradictory, what can be a high sinker. He calls it the high sinker, but he says when I throw it, it runs, and it runs inside, and that's what happened to Hubbard. He got it up and in, and he hit it right on the hand. You know, I've seen some remarkable pitching performances. Don Larson's perfect game in the World Series. Sandy Koufax perfect game. I was fortunate to see Don Drysdale's 58 straight. I never saw anything quite like Hershiser. Not only go 59 straight, go another eight against the Mets in the LCS. He went, although the record won't show it, he went 67 consecutive scoreless innings. It's still hard to believe. It is. And I tell you, they, they were hard. I mean, he was in charge. It's not like he got a lot of breaks. What he does with men in scoring position is just unreal. No balls and one strike to count. One out in the third, no score. Changed up and missed one and one. Oral will have a new contract to negotiate this year, and the feeling in Los Angeles is he will probably get all the land west of the Mississippi. <laughs> one and one. Ball two. So. You know what he does with men in scoring position? They Opponents have batted just 194 men in scoring position. He's allowed just five home runs with runners on base. He's had a dream year on the way to win 23. The 2-1 pitch on the way, a comebacker, and he pulled it down, throws him out. He's a good fielder, so it was not that tough a play. I just want to go back to all this land business now. You think anything's left after Gretzky? <laughs> Talking about Gretzky, it's funny now you say that. Hershiser, a remarkable athlete, as that play would tell you. He's about a four handicapper in golf. He was a wonderful amateur hockey player. He played in a junior team for the Philadelphia Flyers, who played Wayne Gretzky and the Kings last night. And the Flyers are here tonight watching the game. Now, yeah. I'm glad I asked I'm that question. I'll tell you, I can't wait to get to the cocktail party now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one, the count to Storm Davis. No score, third inning. Oh, oh and two. Storm Davis really took that married man stance and swing at that one. He was just happy that he just flagged it. And by the way, when uh, Hershiser went two and one to Weiss, that was the first time today that he went two consecutive balls. We have two out, top of the third, no score. Game two. Uh -oh. And now Sosha's going out as if something's wrong. Yeah. We're yeah. looking at Conseco, but meanwhile, Oro might have felt something on that pitch. Wait a minute. He walked right off the mound, and he kind of, almost like meditating. And something was bothering him. He has had a, uh, I think it's in legs. He has been shaking his legs as if somehow he felt a little tight in that, on that pitch. Certainly can't. See that? He, yeah, he can't feel extra pressure with Davis because he did not take that big swing. Oh, and two. Okay, that's fouled at the plate. Lost in all the headlines and stories about last night was that at bat in the second inning when Dave mm. Stewart, with the count no balls and two strikes, got a walk that extended the inning and allowed Kinseko to hit the slam. But it's tough on the American League pitchers while the games are in the National League Park. One and two. Storm's been here before. He pitched a couple of times for the San Diego Padres here. One ball and two strikes. Oh, what a breaking ball. That's dirty pool again. Well, he just hasn't seen one since uh, San Diego. And at the end of two and a half, no score. Remember when getting a new carpet meant worrying about stains? and wear and tear? Then DuPont created certified Stainmaster carpet to help keep its new looks without your going to great lengths. DuPont Stainmaster. For stains and wear, it's not a Stainmaster carpet. If it doesn't say DuPont. In Japan, 60 automotive journalists named the 1989 Mitsubishi Galant Car of the Year. Now, the Americans report. A refined, impressively built sports sedan. Everything about the Galant GS works well. Galant will blow away the higher price competition. Pure heaven to drive. 
Perhaps Car and Driver sums up the Galant best when it writes, Watch out, Honda. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Man, I sure go for one of these. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth, dry taste hasn't been changed by the pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Right. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as beer gets. Uh, we have a slightly revised forecast. Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. Do y'all fly to Lubbock, Texas? Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Three, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. The folks at Night Court are moving fast wow. to a new night and new time. Yay! A special one-hour Night Court, Wednesday, October 26th. There goes Kirk Gibson and Bill Bueller, the trainer. Gibson, who uh, I imagine he's given him his diagnosis, Ben. He's been the expert on injuries so far. It appears to be everything's all right. Alfredo Griffin fouling the pitch away 0-1. I was just thinking... They haven't been talking about legs here in this town since Brooke Shields arrived. <laughs> oh, and one to count. Lansford trying to take the bunt away from Griffin. He's really in tight at third. Fastball away. One ball and one strike. Griffin, who had a very difficult year with the bat last night, managed to get a base hit, a walk, and then tried to bunt his way aboard. He's always a threat to bunt left-handed. One and two. He did not hit at any time during the year, nor from either side of the plate. And missed 50 some odd games with a broken hand. Two oh. and two, Hassey thought they had it. Umpires don't like that at all. And as you go back, I'm sure Derwood will say something. Look, Ron, people in hooks think I'm a pretty good umpire. Don't you do that again. He hit the target, but it looked like it was inside. Two balls and two strikes to Alfredo Griffin. No score, bottom of the third. Kind of poked that fastball away. That's been his problem. That's not a swing. That's not a hack. You take a look at, at that poke by Alfredo Griffin, and you get an idea of why he's had so many problems. He was cheated. That just wasn't a swing. That was kind of groping. They call that a hope swing. I hope I get the bat on it. I hope it drops in. I hope it goes foul. And he pops it in the air. Foul. Carney Lansford on the line. Now in foul territory to put him away. One down. You certainly can see that the Storm is not afraid to come inside. And good pitchers will do that. And when he misses, he's missing towards the hitter. Because if he misses over the plate, look out. Oral Hershiser coming up with one out in the third inning. No score. <laughs> you talk about tongue in cheek. Bulk up and Bill myself as the mad professor. He is a very, very good bunter. He will try to bunt for a base hit, but remember there was a definite feeling while he was pitching to Storm Davis that his legs were a little tight. One and oh. He showed bunt again, ball two. The other thing he does well, he pulls the third baseman in by shorting up, and then he'll take a hack at it by faking bunt and just chopping down on it. During the regular year, he had 11 hits. Two and one to count. If Hershiser is asked to move a runner or along, that's really his specialty. Lansford has to play him on the grass. There it is. He faked the bunt, he pulls him in. Casey used to call that the old butcher boy. Give it to butcher boy. Two balls and two strikes. Doral Hershiser, one away in the third, no score. Hard breaking ball, a slider missed, ball three. Wouldn't you love to hear Casey try to define quality pitch, backdoor sliders, and all the new terms we have? Three and two, the count. Larusa now watching Storm Davis. And there's a base hit to center. He faked the bunt and does it again. Well, he's a handyman with the bat. And after having had 
had 11 during the year. It's really not a surprise to see him single to center. Now, of course, we'll see if he's asked to run and what effect that might have on his legs. That'll bring up Steve Sachs. So a one-out single, the Dodgers' second hit, and they lost another hit, remember, on that great play by Walt Weiss. Sachs rolled to the right side, 0 for 1. 0 for 1. If they get the ball down on Sachs, in other words, if Storm Davis tries to keep it down, Sachs is about as good as the Dodgers have in going to right field or center field. And he's looking at Amal Fatano to see if they might want him to take a shot at right. He's got a gap there. It'll be his option, and being the hitter he is, I'm sure he'll at least try it. Ball two, because Davis is keeping the ball up and too far up. Two and oh. That's the where he'll be wild. He'll be wild high, and you can see Hasse just kind of motioning to him to get it down. Now the decision is Lasorda's. I know I'm supposed to exercise patience with Davis because he's inclined to be wild. But do I let Sachs go after a 2 and 0 pitch? Let's see. I would. 2 and 1. Because you figure he's going to get the fastball. With the curveball, he doesn't have that big a strike zone, and maybe Sachs, he can punch it in the right field. But he had a pretty good cut at that, like he was trying to pull it. The ball he seems to pull is the, the breaking ball. The, the fastball, he'll hit it from center field to the right field line. tried to go to right hit it inside out it was on the hands and he couldn't get it hit it back into the crowd and the count two balls two strikes the Dodgers are inclined to play a lot of hit and run but particularly with two hitters and the two hitters are Mike Socia and Jeb Hamilton I don't think it'd be unusual to see Hershiser go and he went to right and has his base hit and Hershiser is going to test Conseco the throw is as good a right-hand hitter to go to right field as I've seen in years. He, he just laid that bat out there. Now look at Hershiser. They're going to challenge the open outfield. Even Conseco has that good arm. You saw it in normal replay, and Hershiser did not stop. They're going to challenge everybody. You know they're going to challenge Parker in left and Henderson in center. Maybe a little bit of doubt with Conseco, but in the playoffs, he did not throw that well, and the Dodgers are going to challenge him. Now, here's another interesting decision for Lasorda. You have a feast or famine hitter. Franklin Stubbs is a fly ball hitter who strikes out a lot. A strike. Knowing that he is A, a strikeout hitter, and B, a fly ball hitter, you're not really worrying that much about a double play ball. And you have a very good runner in sacks at first. I'd let that bat in his hands right now, then. On one. And there's the ground ball base hit to right. Hershiser scores, and Sachs will go to third. One nothing Dodgers. And there was the very reason, as you see, Sachs talking to uh, Amal Patano with McGuire holding the runner on a big hole, and Stubbs was able to pull it through there. Big that ball at heart, but in a perfect spot. Time for the moment. They're going to try and calm down Storm Davis a little bit. Here it is right here. That ball is just absolutely dead perfect. If McGuire's in a normal defensive position, he makes that play, but having to hold the runner on, and the Dodgers, once again, don't even hesitate. They go first to third. And I know that LaRusa, in going out there, would say if you ever had to get the ball up on a hitter, it was Stubbs, but with a runner at third, I'm sure he was hoping to get a double play ground ball. He, had to, he was trapped. He was really handcuffed because if he gets the ball up, he gets the fly ball. The run is in. If he gets the ground ball at the second base, got the double play. So it is one to nothing Dodgers on four hits, spearheaded by Hershiser's one out single up the middle. Russell, Tim Cruz, and Lasorda over. 
And Tony La Russa, meanwhile, having counsel Storm Davis, goes back into the dugout. And here's a guy that uses the entire field and puts the ball in play, so you're liable to see anything now. Hatcher, one for one, singled in the first inning to left field. job the pitch good portion of the plate Hatcher spinning away 0 and 1 first and third and one out Hatcher hit a two run home run last night but he also struck out which is almost as rare he had one home run during the regular year and he had only struck out seven times all year. Amalfitano and Sachs really acting it out, talking, and if nothing else, it puts the idea of a squeeze play in your mind, even though it's this early. Runner going, chopper up the middle, in the center field. Sachs will score, stops to third, in there, down to second, Hatcher. second base he went on over to third Walt Weiss came within inches of at least keeping the ball on the field and maybe even scrambling for a force play at second but the ball just eluded him so Mike Marshall who is the big RBI man but also inclined to strike out up there with the infield up strike Stubbs at third Hatcher at second Four consecutive hits for two runs. Last night, you might remember, the Dodgers had three consecutive hits. And you look at him. Hershiser with two strikes, fakes the punt, hits it up the middle, sacks, punches it to right, stops, quits one through. Fastball fouled away, and right away, Marshall is in trouble. No balls, two strikes. Watch this bouncer up the middle, and especially watch Walt Weiss. Watch his Weiss. swing. Watch his swing. He swung down. He was going to make sure he got it down. Now, Weiss, it goes by him. Now, watch Stubbs. He has to jump over him, land on the bag, and he challenges Henderson. I mean, when you got the infield moving like that, look at him out for Tano making sure he got down because they're going to go from first to third all day long. Fouled away. Good pitch down and in. Tough pitch to handle. And Marshall fortunate to get a piece of it. Here is Stubbs now. You'll see Weiss, a head first dive, just missed it. And then Franklin hurdling him to go to third. And, and watching the play all the way, it was a hit and run play. And when he jumps over Weiss, he lands on the bag. 0 oh 2. High fly ball into deep left field. Back goes Parker on the track at the wall. The temperatures today in the 90s, that ball carried better than it would earlier in the year or on a cool evening. That's why Parker went all the way up against the wall as it just kept carrying, and a fan caught it with a glove. Ball one. Mike Sosia. 
So the Dodgers leading the A's 5 nothing. But of course, with the kind of a lineup the A's have, they certainly can't get down. Oh, no. High pop fly going out is Weiss, coming in is Parker, and it's Big Dave. But the Dodgers post a high five on the scoreboard, and three of them knocked in by number five. When the engineers at Nissan designed the new 240SX, they wanted it to have certain acceleration characteristics. The Nissan 240SX. It's a lot of sports car, but you can handle it. Superstar athlete with a beauty queen wife. I just want to be yours, Kevin. Thousands cheered him on. I'm special just as long as I keep making touchdowns. But his toughest challenge would come when his football days were over. It's killing me, Babs! From Taylor Hackford, director of An Officer and a Gentleman, Jessica Lang, Dennis Quaid, Timothy Hutton, everybody's All-American, rated R. Starts Friday, November 4th at a theater near you. AT&T has just made Watts a whole new ball game for any size business. Pick from a lineup of plans that give you call detail, distance sensitive pricing, and major league discounts, even on international and AT&T card calls. If you thought AT&T Watts had just one pitch, now it's a whole new ball game. Giants, and he was upset with the opposition, and he gestured to the bench. He has regretted that since the day it happened. You will notice now that on a home run, he will not show even the slightest bit of emotion. Meanwhile, Watch the runners are just the other way around. Look at Stubbs. Jerry Crawford ready to call if the ball is caught. Lasorda, very conservative, of course. Yay! He jumps up. And, of course, Mickey Hatcher, every day to him is New Year's Eve or Christmas morning. I mean, he doesn't have a bad day, this fella. So it is an interesting string of numbers. The Dodgers score five. Number 55 on the mound and number five, Mike Marshall, had a lot to do with it. And now the A's, undaunted, try to come back. And certainly they have the firepower to do it. This is a ball club that scored 800 runs during the regular year. Lansford, Henderson, and Kenseko. Two balls and no strike. Hershiser has been very effective inside. He's been jamming the hitters. You got Lansford, Henderson, and Parker. That was the pitch of decision, the out pitch on those three fellas the first time around. Two and oh, the count of Carney. In there. Two and one. In all of his at bats this year, Lansford only walked 35 times. So you know you have a very aggressive hitter here. has to be thinking a five-run lead for Hershiser and also I'm sure thinking about that great job that the bullpen of the Dodgers did yesterday they really got lost in the shuffle chopper foul outside of third knocked down by Jimmy Lefevre who wears five and of course it was the rookie of the year for the Dodgers in 1965 played in the 65 and 66 World Series here two and two the count Storm Davis thinking of what might have been. And Lansford appears to chase one. 
It's the third strikeout for Oral Hershiser. And when you pitch inside, this is what it does for you. This one is out of the strike zone, and Lansford, kind of leaning back, just can't get his swings over it. He was hoping he would at least foul it off, and that's when you hear uh, fellas talk about fighting off a tough pitch. That's what he was trying to do. Here's Dave Henderson. He struck out in the first inning. Dave 0 for 1. Off speed for a strike. Wow, what a pitch. Well, you don't think that scouting report helped a little bit? First ball, fastball hit it, so you throw him up that big marshmallow. 77 miles per hour. He could have been arrested on the freeway out here for throwing it that slow. So he started him with a balloon. 0 and 1. And off speed again. Strike two. Now watch the doctor operate. See what he does here. He's got Henderson thinking to himself. He can go any one of five different ways. He can come inside. He can bounce one up there. He can throw another change of pace. And Henderson coming off a great year, a comeback year, after being lost last season. He came back with 24 home runs and 94 ribbies. 0-2. Fastball low. 1-2. and two. To See where he missed, though? There was no way he was going to miss over the plate. That's when you talk about a comeback year. Look at the difference from last year to this. Breaking ball. Got him swinging. Three consecutive strikeouts for Hershiser. Four strikeouts in the game. And we have two out in the fourth inning. And now here comes the guy who makes the earth shake. Remember when Jose Canseco hit earlier, we were talking about his bat. He's such a big guy, and you wonder what kind of a bat does he use as far as size and weight. He is 6'3 and 230. He swings a 36-inch, 36-ounce bat. Now, that's pretty big, but I did a little survey, and for instance, Bob Watson, who was the hitting coach for the Oakland A's, Bob had a 38-inch, 40-ounce bat, like a telephone pole, in there. Some others who had heavy bats. Dick Allen had a 40-ounce bat. Roberto Clemente had a 38-inch, 38-ounce bat. And little Matty Alou swung a 40-ounce bat. Yeah, but Alou just let the ball hit the bat and run. Foul back. His bat, too, Ben. Uh, the first guy I ever saw do that was Musial. Musial would shave down the handle. He has the bat boy shaved down the handle. All the weight is in Conseco's, the barrel of Conseco's bat. Very thin handle. And look at the size of that. Now, there are housing developments that don't weigh that much. <laughs> That's the defensive front five. Oh. One and two, the count to Jose Canseco. Baylor is the midget in that group. Another fellow I understand, it might, Kevin McReynolds of the New York Mets, his bat is 38 ounces. Boy, you got to be strong to swing that kind of thing all Well, summer. that's when they talk about explosive strength that Canseco has. One and two. Behind him, off speed to the backstop. That's not a pitch for intimidation. You can see my Canseco laugh. It was just an off speed slip. That's like the bar soap in the shower slipping out. Look where Soche is. And I mean, he doesn't miss that much. And Canseco has to laugh at that one. Two balls and two strikes. You can see him try to twist it, and it just didn't do anything. So she didn't come within a foot of it. I was just wondering, Canseco's been hit 10 times this year, but of course Don Baylor always wins that. He was hit a dozen times. Half swing, got him. He strikes out the side. Four consecutive strikeouts and five in the game. say the new Nissan 240SX is uniquely designed to provide excellent cornering. The Nissan 240SX. It's a lot of sports car, but you can handle it. 
Not all Xerox machines copy documents. Some help create them, print them, send them anywhere in the world, even store them electronically. And you thought we only made great copiers. Team Xerox, we document the world. Before your tires show uneven wear, have your alignment checked. Or you could be shortening tire life and taking risks. At Midas, trained professionals with the latest technology align your car right. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Something is coming to NBC. Something suspenseful. Something mysterious. An exciting, explosive, erotic. Now you've got my attention. Action-packed thriller. What the hell is this thing? It's the crime drama with a difference. Must be from another planet. I am. Premiering Friday, something is out there. Woodman, Woodman, spare that tree. <laughs> that is Conseco's bat, and the youngster working on it, the bat boy, the thin man handle down. Of course, somebody's always got to agitate. Is there a satanic conspiracy in this case? <laughs> Sound ridiculous? That's a very tight pinch, isn't it? <laughs> we were talking before about the Oakland A's having the firepower to come back, trailing the Dodgers 5-0. They came back, you remember, when it appeared as if they were buried by the Red Sox. Meanwhile, Jeff Hamilton, Alfredo Griffin, Oral Hershiser, roller up the middle, and there's Weiss on it behind the bag to get him. That's the second time Walt Weiss has taken a base hit away from Jeff Hamilton. Hamilton, he tried to get one in the hole, and Weiss comes up with a look how far he goes. He must be seven, eight, ten steps on the other side of second base. Again, throwing off balance and an accurate throw, and it's not even close. That's the amazing thing to me. Gets his balance right here. He's a real acrobat. Pleasure to watch young Walt Weiss, the shortstop for Oakland. One away in the fourth inning. And Alfredo Griffin, who fouled out in the third, coming up. Five runs, six hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for the A's. It was a leadoff single by Dave Parker in the second inning. There's the scouting report. Fastball's up. Best bunter on team certainly will bunt for the base hit. Either way, push it or drag it. I think that the first words of that scouting right. report, it's like an albatross around your neck. Very slow bat. Well, that last time up, you remember he just was hoping that that hope swing, that's a slow bat. 0-2 oh the count. Ground ball, slow bat. but he really doesn't. Almost like he took a peek to see where he was. I don't know. Now, he's got it here. Yeah, he took a peek, and that's what cost him. So Griffin at first with one out. Here is Hershiser. As good a bunter as there is in the team. Not a bad hitter. You saw him single to ignite the five-run third. And he bunts foul. 0-1. But again, remember now that fake bunt. He got the base hit the last time on that, but they want to be sure to get it over. But I would not be surprised to see him do it again because he's so so good at it. Amalfitano has flashed his sign. Griffin was not a base stealing threat. He stole seven, but he was caught five times. I think he's going to do it because he's shown it so early. He's going to fake the bunt and swing. Look how early he's shown that bunt. I wouldn't believe him. Now he's going to double check. Probably took, probably took it off now. I said, okay, you tipped it off. We'll make you bunt. I'd look for straight bunt. But look how early he, he I tell you, he, he put you in a tough spot. And fouled away. So one of the better bunters tied with Rick Russell, as you saw, in the National League. And Storm Davis has him. No balls, two strikes. I'd let him use the same play he used the last time. Fake the bunt and swing. Because he, he gets the bat on the ball, and Griffin has good speed. What you want to do, of course, is stay away from that double play. Alfredo Griffin at first, one out. 0 oh and 2 to Hershiser. There it is. And it's away, ball one. One and two. First guy I ever saw do that, man, was Murray Dixon. Oh, he could handle that bat. And he would do that all the time. Boy, it's a great plus. It is. Only in the National League. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. can't 
him buy a ticket on a ride He's in the American League. League. Uh-oh, had him starting to walk. That was kind of an indication that yep. Griffin was going to go. And Hershiser is going to run. I don't think he's going to punt. I think he's showing punt and is going to swing because he's too good at it to punt. Of course, when you think about it, if Griffin goes and Hershiser strikes out and they double Griffin up, you walk away and you have Sachs leading off the next inning. True. So, but if he swings, fakes the punt and swings and fouls it off, he's still alive. Griffin is gone. Then the pitch is slapped down the line. Griffin is being waved in. Canseco is going to relay to McGuire, and it's over his head. The run scores on a double by Oro Hershiser with two strikes. And he fakes the bunt, and once again, they challenge the best arm in the outfield. Amal Patano didn't hesitate, had Griffin coming all the way. And once the relay missed McGuire, it was an easy play for Griffin to score. The Dodgers are leading the Athletics six to nothing. As you see that line drive just inside the right field foul line. Canseco's throw, since he is running to his glove side, did not have a lot on it. McGuire might have been able to help, but he missed him. And then it just dribbled up the line. Now watch Griffin. He does not hesitate. And watch him out for Tano if, if he's in the shot now. Conseco does not get behind this throw. It's almost like he wants to get rid of it quickly. It's over McGuire's head. And Griffin, I mean, he comes flashing across, even though Sachs was saying slide. It looked like he was motioning down. And Storm Davis has been unable to weather the storm. It is six to nothing Dodgers with one out in the fourth inning. We'll be back. You wouldn't believe what the Pathfinder went through on the road to Batatulan. I guess when they ran out of asphalt, they used cobblestone. When they ran out of cobblestones, they used rocks. When they ran out of rocks, they used gravel. When they ran out of gravel, they used dirt. They never ran out of dirt. When it comes to doing business overseas, you got to know how to get it over there. You got to span the globe. You got to put spin on the ball. You got to know foreign relations most of all. You got to know the customs. You can't afford to be stopped at the border. You got to make things happen when you get your customer's order. This reminder from Federal Express that it's not just a package, it's your business. like your new car. Thanks. It's got loads of power and really holds the road. You need all that performance? No, but it's nice to know it's there. You really have to take care of a car like this. <laughs> a car like this is supposed to take care of you. That's why I bought Michelin's. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. What gum has enough good taste to do a commercial like this? Trident, of course. Because when you've got five mouth-watering flavors that taste this good, you don't need to make a lot of noise. Trident. Millions of teeth can't be wrong. Heck of a hot tub. Huh? Heather? You need the Listerman. You're in hot water, Val. You should have used Listerman. Listerman with fluoride freshens breath and strengthens teeth. Listerman, making your mouth a cleaner place. Witness thoroughbred racing as it's never been seen before through the eyes of the world's great cameramen. Next Saturday, only on NBC Sports World. The Dodgers leading six to nothing, and Gene Nelson trying to restore order now against Steve Sachs and a breaking ball away, ball one. Sachs has grounded out and single to right. The hardest working pitcher on the Oakland staff. Gene Nelson, and he's a kind of a guy who'll pitch every day if need be. He pitched 108 innings in relief, second to Dwayne Ward of Toronto. Chopper to shortstop. Weiss holding Hershiser to throw him out. Here's that replay on uh, Griffin scoring. Now he is running full steam. Now look at him, Alpatano, way down the line. He's waving him all the way. And of course, when the throw gets by McGuire, it's an easy play for Griffin, even though Sachs is saying, get down. Now, Lasorda on the bench is really a cheerleader. Watch him. He's watching. You can read his lips. Come on. He's coaching now. Come on. 
and you'll see the reaction. The thing that has to be bothering Tony La Russa especially, you can understand maybe a Mike Marshall hitting a home run because he led the club in RBIs, but the bottom of the Dodger lineup is also bothering Oakland. The number eight hitter Alfredo Griffin has one hit and scored a run. The pitcher Oral Hershiser has a single and a double. He has scored a run and knocked one in. And that has to be maddening when the bottom of the lineup is adding to the havoc that the top of the lineup has already provided. 0 and 1. One ball and one strike to Stubbs who flied to left and single to right. I tell you, Hershiser is not an automatic out when he goes into that fake bunt because he, when he swings at that ball, he doesn't overswing. He just tries to put the bat on the ball and put it in play, and it's really paid off for him. One and one. Off speed ball, too. You know, another thing I was thinking of is Tony La Russa has a lot of thoughts. Oral Hershiser pitched close to 270 innings during the regular season. Then he pitched in the LCS. Now he has four innings under his belt tonight and he's running the bases. You wonder just how much stamina he has left and whether he will run out of gas in this game. Well, that could very well be, but I think he'd be the first guy to tell you. And I tell you, I wouldn't worry about his stamina because the way he takes care of himself. By the way, you might notice That's he's jacket. running under an assumed name. <laughs> That's trainer Charlie Strasser's jacket. Three and one. Nelson, he uses a baseball expression I've heard a thousand years. He's got good stuff. His fastball will sink when it's down. He's got a good curveball. Not afraid to throw strikes, although he just walks stubs here. He'll battle the hitters is the way Dave puts it. You know, he was put in as a pinch runner against Toronto, and as a pinch runner, he stole a base. The first pitcher in the American League to steal a base since the designated hitter was introduced. So Gene Nelson is in the history book. And the other thing that Dave talks about him, he said he's happy in his role as the middle reliever. He doesn't moan about when am I going to be a closer, when am I going to be a starter. This is what you want me to do. I'm glad to do it, and I'll do you a good job. One and all, the count to Hatcher. Six runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for the Athletics. That's a good portion of the story. There was a three-run home run by Mike Marshall, and Hershiser is two for two. Check swing, a comebacker. Gene has it, throws him out while Hatcher's still in the box. Mickey is still there talking to the plate umpire, and he's done. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Is there a satanic conspiracy in this country? Sound ridiculous? Well, before you laugh, join me for devil worship. Exposing Satan's underground. You can't get hipper than moi. Health Club, can you tell? Moose in my hair. Canning salon every Thursday. Whatever kind of food I'm eating, that's the kind of beer I'm drinking, comprendo. When you're done kidding around, Heineken. The oh, hot! Designer sweats, remote control, everything. VP at 28. Whoa! My imported beer, whatever's in this week. Like we said, when you're done kidding around, Heineken. Oh, give me land, lots of land under sunny skies above. Don't fence me in. You put the letter in here, and the letter goes round and round, whoa, and it comes out here. With Sharp's choice of fax machines, you can send documents in as little as 12 seconds to any place in the world you can phone. And the photo goes round and round, whoa, whoa, and it comes out here. And that will change the way you do business forever. And it comes out here. Sharp, the number one selling fax machine in America. Michelo presents Sunday night at 12.15 on Channel 4. Here's 
that ball that jams Hatcher. Now, most guys, you really hate this because you really feel cheated. Most guys will throw the bat down and complain. Now, watch what Hatcher does. He's a little bit confused, looks around. And it's right out of our gang comedy. Spanky says to the umpire, come on, slips don't count. But they do. The only time you will ever see Hatcher not run as he was completely tied up. Talking about tied up, there's a man tied up. He's busy at the controls of the Goodyear Blimp Columbia tonight. Captain John Creighton from Redondo Beach, Florida. Right after the game, the Columbia will leave for Oakland. It takes 15 hours by blimp. Redondo Beach, Florida. Mm. You know, you mentioned Florida, Vin. In uh, Lakeland and Plant City, they're going to have a Rip Sewell Appreciation Day on October 28th. The old Ripper had an operation, and they're going to show up and play golf. And Jim Campbell of the Tigers told me about it, and I sure hope the good people around that area, Tampa and Winter Haven and Lakeland, show up for the Ripper. Indeed. October 28th, Appreciation Day. Well, we'll see now if the big guys can come back. It'll be Parker, McGuire, and then Hassey in the fifth inning, among other things, remember. Hershiser, who started Parker with a strike, has struck out four consecutive hitters. In case you're interested, the World Series record is six. 0 oh and 1 to Dave, who singled a center in the second inning. 1 and 1, right at the left kneecap. Which is the same thing, really, as a knockdown pitch, only it doesn't cause all the furor. That's right. It's just mostly modern and says, hey, I want the inside part to play, too. One and two the count to Dave Parker. See, I call that the Bob Gibson, the great Cardinal pitcher theory. He'd say, I'll give you the middle of the plate, but I want the inside and outside corner. There's a guy I really feel sorry for, Tim Cruz, sitting next to Ron Peronoski. I'll tell you why in a minute. One and two the count to Dave Parker. Fouled away. The Dodgers had to make a decision before the LCS. And they opted for 20-year-old Ramon Martinez. And Cruz, who'd been with them all year, had pitched exceptionally well, and especially against the Mets, was ruled ineligible. Now the only way he could get into a game is if someone was injured. So he sits in uniform and thinks of what might have been. Right. One and two. Boy, he had him set for the corner, just got it in there, two and two. There's another fellow you can put in that category, and that's Fernando. Oh, yes. All the great pitching he did here. But, of course, Fernando. He's been there. He, and he also was hurt. Right. The Cruz was healthy and bypassed. Two and two. Change. Grounded. Bad hop over the head of Stubbs. And a glimmer of hope now for the Oakland A's. When you're down something like 6 nothing, you're always looking for a break. And there it was. A bad hop single over the head of Stubbs. We'll see what that means. Talk about that infield. The infielders were complaining. Now Stubbs is right there, but it takes a vicious hop way over his head. So Dave Parker on a kangaroo bounce into right field is two for two. And the batter is Mark McGuire, who grounded into a double play in the second inning. Mark, local boy, went to school here at SC. Should have been inspired when he saw the Trojan band before the Wasn't game. Wasn't that something? Ball in there at the knees. That's the kind of pitch McGuire would be very unhappy about taking. And also, if it's the pitch, if he tries to pull, he's going to hit that ground ball to the shortstop like he did in that second inning. Can't pull him. No balls, one strike. Dead low ball hitter. Big chopper into the hole. Backhanded by Griffin to Sacks for one to stop. of Steve Sachs. He just got clipped at the end there. Sachs knew it. It was. It could have been certainly an easy thing to just take him to make one sure out, but he wasn't happy with that. A strike to Ron Hassey. Here's Parker coming down. This is a big man. He can take you out. Now he's got it, and the ball's on its way, and he just does get clipped. 
I tell you that that's just that's just great playing. No balls and one strike to Hassey. How did Hershiser react to the double play? It was a big one following the bad hop. Ecstasy. <laughs> He's saying, oh man, on the second division team, we got runners at first and second. I got two men out and nobody on. One ball, one strike. Off speed and away. Ball two. So for one moment there, if the A's get a lift, they get a bad hop single, you think, okay, maybe we're in business. Boom. Somebody turns the gas down. And that looked like a base hit right there because it's in the hole. And at the worst, is, I'm sure when you see the play, if you're sitting on the Oakland bench, you say, well, I'll get a four-sided second base. You look up and there's two outs on the scoreboard. And it's still only the fifth inning. Two and two, the count to Ron. is grounded out in the second inning, 0 for 1. Tough night so far for Tony La Russa. But of course, one consolation, they're going home to the Coliseum. A little fly ball to the left. Hatcher coming on. He's there. No runs. A bad hot single. Nobody left. And at the end of four and a half, six nothing Dodgers. You know, when I pitched, I used to have trouble in the late innings. But I won't have any trouble pitching my favorite beer, Miller Light. Light's less filling, and it's, uh, and, uh, it's Light's less, uh, uh, and it's uh... Arnie Palmer, 18th hole for the win. Excuse me, Mr. Palmer, is it true about Arnie's caddy giveaway? Pennzoil's really giving away 50 new 89 Cadillac sedan to Vils? Yeah, 50. Wow. I guess to win a Cadillac, I just mail an entry form some quality Pennzoil motor oil. Ooh, sorry. Pennzoil's giving away 50 Cadillacs. 50? Arnie's Caddy Giveaway. Enter today. See this phone? This is my store. And for years, my store was at the mercy of AT&T. But now, with MCI, I finally have an 800 service that charges me only for the actual distance of the calls we get and can tell me where every one of those calls is coming from. And that makes this a better store. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI. Let us show you. To tackle all this and more, Texas Steer insulated work boots in regular way. Wide width and new buck leather. Just $29. On sale now at Kmart. And it's, uh, and it's, uh, lightsless filling and it's, That's uh, it for today, Mike. Raleigh, finish it up. And it tastes great, too. Yeah. No matter how you pitch them, there's only one light beer. Miller Light. <laughs> the folks at Night Court are moving fast. Wow! To a new night and new time. A special one-hour night court, Wednesday, October 26th. Dodger Stadium, the Jewel in Los Angeles, opened up in 1962, and it is really open for business now. Mike Marshall, who hit a three-run home run in the third inning, will start it off with the Dodgers leading 6-0. 0-1. You talk about 1962, Doug Harvey, who umpired behind the plate last night, is the right field line. His first game as a Major League umpire was on that day when they opened it here. He was working third base. And Rene Latchman, the Oakland A's first base coach, was a ball boy, and <laughs> If he was really lucky, a bat boy. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Now Marshall, remember, struck out 0 oh, and 2 in the first inning. He hit a three-run home run, 0 oh, and 2 in the third. That sums up the kind of hitter he is. You throw it, he might swing at it. There he goes. He does, drives it into the left field corner, and the Cobra can't get it. It's against the fence, and the ball is still in play. Marshall is on his way for three. The throw to third.
Dodgers get a break, the fans were leaning over. You see them, but they do not touch the ball, so the Dodgers end up with an extra base. If they touch it, it's a double. They do not touch it. It's a triple, and now they have to come in with the infield. Look at Marshall. He's digging hard, and he's going to challenge Parker all the way. John Shelby had been first ball swinging against Storm Davis and twice grounded out. Now he's trying to pick up Marshall. The infield is up. 6-0 Dodgers in the fifth inning. Nobody out. Off speed. If you're thinking about a scoring fly ball, for instance, Shelby had a half a dozen during the year. Lansford up inside the bag. One and one. Strike. One and two. That was a great effort by Dave Parker. Remember, he'd only played 34 games in left field, hadn't played since June until now, and made a great effort and just came up a buck short as Shelby strikes out. One down. I tell you though, that Hassey's going to have to just impress upon these guys to bounce that ball up if you get two quick strikes on Marshall and see how anxious he is. Dave Parker had to go back and after that dive replace several divots. <laughs> the entire fairway, in fact. Here's Mike Sosha. Struck out, fly to left, 0 for 2. The Dodgers, six runs, nine hits. Now, a lot of things could happen here because Sosha's a contact hitter. And he pops it up. Going out to get it is Hubbard. And makes the play. Good pitching by Gene Nelson. With a runner at third and nobody out, he strikes out Shelby and gets Sosha to pop up. That's about as good as you can get. And he really had Marshall Owen, too, and evidently threw one in the wrong spot. That's the yardstick that the baseball people use. What does he do? What does a pitcher do with that man at third base in less than two outs? That's good, just good pitching. In talking about him, a scout said to me, and I, I love to hear that about a pitcher, he wants the ball every day. He's not afraid, to, and he doesn't look over his shoulder over to the bullpens, even the help is coming along. So with two out in the fifth inning, here is Jeff Hamilton. Hamilton could be two for two, but Walt Weiss has done a number on him, taking one in the hole and one behind second to throw him out each time. Right. When Oakland comes up in the sixth inning, they have Glenn Hubbard, Walt Weiss, and then Gene Nelson's spot, and way back in the shadows in right field, they have somebody throwing, so you know LaRusso's thinking hitter. leave Marshall at third at the end of five Dodgers six A's nothing it's not just a car it's your freedom oh a car in good shape yeah had it all checked out gas station nah GM dealership figure those good wrench guys know what they're doing good so any idea where you're going not exactly but I'll let you know when I get there I'll be waiting It's not just a car, it's your freedom. These days, a lot of airlines are cutting corners on their meals. Now this little beauty we like to call Banquet on a Bun, right, Bob? Banquet on a Bun. I like it. Sit down, Bob. Now with this, you can serve a whole plain loaf for just pennies. I like it. Elastic parsley. You can use it over and over again. I like it. Pick me chickens. You can get 125 in an ordinary shoebox. I like it. At Alaska Airlines, we spend a little more on our meals, and you can taste the difference. When the stars come out to play, baby, a twinkling show, ooh, dinner out of sight, yeah, the night time is golden light time, make dinner at McDonald's. My brother just got the most critically acclaimed, top-rated compact disc player, a Magnavox. Sounds good, too. No other CD players won more awards for flawless sound. It sounds, Audio, it sounds good, too. Audio experts say nothing even comes close. It sounds great. Magnavox makes incredible CD players. It sounds good, too. Sounds well, what do you expect? Magnavox is the company that invented CD technology. Then you suspect it would sound good, too. They're smart, Tom. Yeah. Very, Very smart. smart. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. 
How could a respected judge have two wives, two families, living miles apart for 19 years? Double standard. Monday. Bob Welch, and oh, what a Dodger he was. And now a great year with Oakland, and he'll be set to face the Dodgers in game three at the Coliseum. So we're looking forward to that game. And he's got a lot of bulldog in him, and you can expect quite a battle with Welsh. Yes, you can. And old big Frank Chinsack as we look at La Russa. If you want to play manager now in the inning, you have Hubbard and Weiss, and then you're starting to think about a pinch hitter. Number one, he has three switch hitters in the dugout, Phillips, Polonia, and Javier. And he has right-hand hitters, Gallego, Steinbeck, and then Don Baylor. So it might depend on how the inning progresses, how many get aboard as to what he does. A chopper to Hamilton. One away. I tell you, you try to pull him, you're playing right in his hands. I'm a little surprised, too. After all right. the base running and all the maneuvering that Hershiser has gone through, I can't believe a hitter would swing at the first pitch in the sixth inning. Even if he didn't, Hershiser, with that pitch, has made 56 pitches in five and a third innings. He's faced 16 batters in that time, not one to second base. Look at that. 37 strikes, 20 balls. More importantly, the first pitch strikes to 11 of 15 hitters, 16 hitters now. One ball and no strikes to Walt Weiss, who has been outstanding at shortstop. Walt with the bat, hit back to the box in the third inning. Hershiser made a nice play to get him. That's foul. Luis Polonia, a switch hitter. And, of course, you would always remember him if you just look at his pants. I asked him because everybody, when I said it on a game of the week, why didn't I ask him? He's give, he gave me a great answer. He said, I don't know. <laughs> one ball and one strike. What? Well, why do you wear them down low? I don't know. They feel good. I always remember the great line, Ring Lardner, writing about the father driving the car and the kids are in the car. Shut up, he explained. <laughs> That's about what he was going to tell me. <laughs> Two and one. They feel good. A chopper to Sachs, and he short hops to get him. The National League answer to Polonia would be Roger McDowell. McDowell, his pants go straight down into his shoes. <laughs> Two down. Nothing like style. I said, don't you think maybe you'd lose a strike if you wore them higher? Maybe you'd get... So now they feel good like this. Well, one thing for sure, it is more comfortable because you don't have any pressure to cut the circulation off in your legs. Well, I would guess. But then again, you're not supposed to make a ball club by whether you make GQ or not, huh? Right. So here's Polonia, a first ball hitter. Thank you very much as he pops it up. Trailing by six. That's the change in baseball right there. It's the biggest change I know. So they're gone in the six, and at the end of five and a half, six nothing Dodgers. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Atra Plus. Its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First we made it closer, then we made it smoother. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Chevy S10 versus Ford Ranger, folks, in the dash from destruction. A test of getaway acceleration between two compact pickups, each with biggest available engine and automatic. Which one has the power to win? Chevy's bigger V6 is already pulling away from Ford and that runaway dynamite car. Chevy S10 has the power to get away, but Ford doesn't. No wonder, when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. What's all this about you selling the Market Street building? 
My client's still interested in that space. We accepted Gail's offer this morning. Hello, Jason. You could have made a counteroffer. If you'd let me know what was going on, I would have. But I called your office yesterday. I left you a message. You left me a message? This story begins. Christopher Reeve, Judd Hirsch, and Anthony Dennison. November 6th, The Great Escape 2, The Untold Story. The 1988 World Series is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And by Magnavox, smart products for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. Bottom of the sixth inning, as they towel off Oral Hershiser, it is really the heat, not that he has worked that hard. To illustrate the point, in the sixth inning, he made only five pitches to get the three outs. And in a sense, it would appear Oakland has played right into his hands. He's been running the bases, and they refuse to make him work. And they also try to pull the ball and get the ground ball. He's made 61 pitches in six innings. He has faced the minimum. He's had two double plays to help him. And in the inning where he made only five pitches, two of the three hitters were Glenn Hubbard and Louis Polonia. As we look at Kurt Young, and they are the wee men in the attack. And yet, instead of making him pitch, try to get aboard, anything at all, they went up there hacking right away. And hacking is Griffin, but he hits it to Canseco in right center. One away. You know, the point you make about drawing that base on balls, you could scotch tape those two guys together. They would make one Canseco. Well, that's right. One is about 5'7", the other 5'8". And it's just shocking, down 6-0, that they would not try to make Hershiser. And here he comes, and he's made himself work with a single and a double, scored a run and knocked in one. And the fantasy for him continues. He's pitched a strong six innings of shutout ball. Hershiser single to center in the third. And then with two strikes, doubled inside the right field foul line in the four. You know, some people might be thinking they got a six-run lead. Why not take him out of the ball game and save him to come back later on? I don't think Lestorda will do it. Oh, and shot another one. Third and down the line. Hershiser is going to go three for three with two doubles. They'll never get him out of the game now when you get three hits. And what is it the American League always says? What's the fun of watching a pitcher hit? That's right. He's had more base hits than the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's only have two, and he's got three, and he doesn't want to, yeah, bring a jacket out. Now, he pulls it right by Lansford. I'll tell you, we have a moment, and you were talking about why not take him out as we see his third hit. And he is expending energy more on the base pads than on the mound, and he'll wear Charlie Strasser's jacket again. The Dodgers, during the LCS, went to the bullpen 18 times. So the pen needs as much of a rest as he does. And, and that is a strong point, and also the fact that he's going so good, I don't think the couple innings is going to make any difference, and why break the rhythm of what he has done? So here is Sachs, grounded out twice and singled, one for three. the point that the Oakland A's have hit more home runs than the St. Louis Cardinals, but tonight can you imagine the pitcher for the Dodgers has out hit the Oakland A's so far? The key so far. Oh yes, yes. oh yes, because everybody on the Oakland A's, when they get in the batter's box, they're in scoring position. Remember when the A's come up in the seventh inning and they've got to be just dying to break loose. It'll be Carney Lansford, Dave Henderson and Jose Canseco, and then Dave Parker. So La Russa has some big cards yet to play. One ball, one strike. Comebacker. Kurt Young will make the play, and Hershiser stays at second. You think he's wearing Charlie Strasser's uh, jacket just to get Charlie a little publicity? He would be like him. Oh, absolutely. I guarantee you that's why he's doing it. Sure. Charlie Strasser, one of the three Dodger trainers, Bill Bueller, Pat Screener, and Charlie. Probably superstitious, too. 
Lucky jacket. What do you think? No, I don't think. I think that. it's just a fact. I think World Series. He's given Charlie Strasser a little publicity. Here's Tracy Woodson batting for Stubbs, and then he will stay in. And as we look at Charlie Strasser, minus his jacket, sitting between Steve Sachs and Fernando Valenzuela. Tracy Woodson will hit for Stubbs, and then stay in. Hershiser at second base with two out in the sixth, and the Dodgers leading six nothing. Franklin Stubbs he had flied to left single to right and walk sitting next to Mike Sharperson another kid who is not eligible to play change fouled away that's kind of a nice touch you know you, you play in and out with a club all year you're not eligible but they say hey where are you I went through that did you DeRocher in 54 I wasn't eligible and Leo insisted that I would go to Cleveland it was great I, I would uh, catch batting practice I travel with the club it was like winning a contest 25 wins or less why I want to go to the World Series with Leo DeRocher what I did on my summer vacation that's right oh and two <laughs> Once again, we remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the game. So far, the suspense, of course, would be tremendous, right? Who it would be? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's overwhelming suspense. <laughs> it's like last night. We had such a tough time. One ball and two strikes. Hard breaking ball at the feet. Two and two, the count. You know, it sounds like I'm picking on Oakland. But when you stop to think about it, the Oakland A's so far have two extra base hits. Conseco's home run, Henderson's double, Hershiser has tied them. And don't you know they're aware of that? Mm. Mm. Two balls, two strikes. Popped in the air on the right side. Mark McGuire along with Hubbard, and it will be McGuire. So the Dodgers left Marshall at third in the fifth and Hershiser at second in the sixth, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is Jack Killian, the Nighthawk on KJCM Radio. The lines are open, so give me a call. Good Night Caller, premiering October 25th. The vice president of Cadbury Schweppes is sleeping on the job. The publisher of Cosmopolitan can barely keep his eyes open. In fact, some of the world's most successful business people are off in Never Never Land. And that's exactly where we want them. Because when it comes to business, Pan Am believes the more relaxed and rested you are up here, the better you'll do down there. Pan Am, the number one airline to Europe, and more. When it comes to doing business with foreign lands, you gotta know how to balance your trade. You gotta know the time. You gotta know your zones. You gotta know how to speak the language. You gotta bring things in from far away. You gotta know their destinations. Your customers are waiting at the end of the line. Now is no time for complications. This reminder from Federal Express that it's not just a package. It's your business. The drug criminals don't get the brakes here anymore because one senator made good his promise. Pete Wilson, the new law that helps keep pushers in jail. Changed the law so that more money seized in drug raids goes right back into enforcement. Wrote the law that keeps drug paraphernalia from being sold through the mails. And his new law cuts off aid to countries that won't help against smuggling drugs. Some just talk. Your senator does something. Pete Wilson, always fighting for California. Watch Fred Rogan's post game with Tommy Lasorda tonight. You know, at the start of the night, we said there were a couple of things to keep an eye on with Hershiser. Number one, the fact that he would throw strikes. And number two, a lot of ground balls. And that gives you an idea of what's gone on tonight. Two balls in the outfield and the ground balls that they try to pull him, they are really in trouble. But that's a pretty good indication right there. Five strikeouts, no walks. And he has allowed just two hits. He the top of the order in the uh, fourth inning when he struck out everybody in the side, I mean, he was really throwing what you'd have to call the Hershiser pitch. Here it is. Now, here's Lansford with the strikeout pitch. He set him up. 
Anderson again outside after setting him up inside. Here's Konsenko outside. Three pitches you could diagram, but of course, keep in mind, he had set them all up. He had to do something before he got there, and he did it well. And there's another thing I think that happened. That fourth inning was on the heels of the bottom of the third where the Dodgers scored five. And I think those big guys came up, and each one was trying to catch up by himself. And that's why they were so susceptible to chasing that bad ball. So let's see what they do now. In see the if seventh. he pitches in the same way. Chopper to third, right under, behind Jeb Hamilton and through. He would make that play, I believe, most of the time. He just started to come up, and it went by him. Tracy Woodson, the new first baseman, and it will be an error charged to Hamilton. He should make that play. Which first brings pitch. up a point, too. That's right, first pitch again. You could see he just didn't get the tailgate down, and here's another look at it. He breaks to his left. Looks like he's in good shape. Really got his feet tangled. The official score is Jack Lang of the Baseball Writers of America, Dave Nightingale of the Sporting News, and Vern Plagenhoff from Booth Newspapers, and that one in there all the way. So here is Dave Henderson. Woodson suddenly comes up to hold the runner on. He was behind the bag. Six-run lead, you figure him to be behind the bag, and Arl really shouldn't be too concerned about uh, Lansford at first. Line foul down the right field line. Henderson has struck out twice, so he's a little hungry up there. Dave 0 for 2. Just on what you said, Ben, you know, so far was the key word because two pitches, these guys went to hack, and Hans Lansford hits it by uh, Hamilton error, and the first pitch, Henderson jumps on it. They don't look at that scoreboard and say, we'll take a strike. 0 oh and 1 with Canseco on deck. And a bunt foul back. Not a bad idea. You're down by six. The third baseman is deep in the suburbs. You might as well lay it on and have the big guy come up and get you back in the game. I have no problems with that play because they need base runners. You've got to try to put them on any way you can. And is he loose? That was the point earlier. Here is a big guy like Henderson at least thinking about moving Hershiser around. And the little guys, Hubbard and Polonia, go up there and hack and make out on the first pitch. Oh and two. Chopper to Sachs. He backs up for the hop. They get one. Not in time. Carney Lansford in on the bag with a good hard slide, even though he does have a bad right elbow and it is heavily padded. He came right out of his shirt. Tell you, he's a good athlete. And Griffin, Sachs gives him a good ball to handle. They're going to make one sure out. And Griffin just slides across the bag. And look at Lansford just going right in there. And Alfredo couldn't get that much on that throw. One away, and here is Kinseiko. Flied to right and struck out. So the big boy here with a runner aboard. One out in the seven. Six-nothing Dodgers. Fastball and a towering fly ball. It's playable. John Shelby. Looked like that fly ball was so high that when it came down, it almost knocked Shelby down. Drive him into the ground. First pitch again. The three hitters jumped on that first pitch. I don't know. I, I guess it's too obvious that we must be completely out to lunch. No, you can't be. You're trailing by six. You need base runners. You just have to make Hirschheiser work a little bit. Now, Earl is calling uh, Socia out there, and Woodson, he just wants to listen in because Earl will be the chairman of the board in this meeting. Dave Parker, the hitter is two for two, single to center and a single to right. So Canseco has been silenced at least for his three at bats. He made enough noise in the second inning when he hit his grand slam last night, but he has drawn blank since. Two down. They don't expect him to do any running down 6 nothing. Ball one. And I'll bet you Earl made that pitch because he said he might be hitting the first pitch. I'm not going to lay it in there. And I'll pitch from behind right here because he got that ball low and inside, hoping that he was swinging and would chase the bad ball. It is hard to believe when you realize what a good ball club the Oakland A's are. And make no mistake, they are a dynamite team. 
But going to second base is Henderson and take a good look at him. He is the first member of the A's to reach second base tonight. That's a collector's item. It is. Put that on videotape. So Parker, who is certainly no stranger to Dodger Stadium, he is three for three. McGuire will be the hitter. And again, LaRusse is sitting there waiting for one of his big guys to do something big, and the telephone is ringing in the Dodger bullpen. So for the first time tonight, we will have some throwing down there in a moment. Remember, the Dodgers went to the bullpen 18 times during the LCS, and among others brought in Leary and Hershiser in relief. McGuire has tried to pull the ball, although it took a great play the last time to get that double play. Uh, Griffin and Sachs turned it over, but when you try to pull Hershiser, you are in trouble. And down in the Dodger bullpen now, just beginning to stretch it out, is the former A, Jay Howell. Well, there's a fly ball to right. Marshall is there. And the A's lead two. And at the end of six and a half, Dodger six, A's nothing. Now here's Bob Costas with tonight's special feature. The keys to success brought to you by Citicorp. And Ben, just as you said regarding tonight's game MVP, the selection here is overwhelmingly obvious. Oral Hershiser working on a three-hit shutout. And at the plate, he's three for three with an RBI, a run scored, and a couple of doubles. It's been that way all year for him. 23 wins, the record string of scoreless innings, the playoff clinching victory. As it stands now, he's scheduled to work game five on three days rest. And if there is a seventh, both he and Lasorda say he could go on two days rest. The American desire to succeed runs in the family, brought here by your great-great-grandparents and handed down to you. In that same spirit of success, Citicorp and Citibank help more Americans own homes, attend college, and get what they want with MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We also serve millions of customers around the world. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. You know, when I played football, people said I was one tough player. But I not only outmuscled the other guy, I outsmarted him. I used my head. And a guy like me enjoys drinking Miller Lite because Lite's the less filling beer that tastes great. But the best thing about Miller Lite is that it shows a tough guy like me can still use his head. Well, how's that, Gary? Oh. You hit it right on the head. There's only one light beer, Miller Lite. A shocking capital crime triggers one man's rise to power. What an interesting hero we have here. A ruthless cover-up begins one man's desperate search. What started this? And a dark obsession fires one woman's passionate dream. He's the right man at the right time, and I want him to be president. Harry Hamlin, Crocodile Dundee's Linda Kozlowski, Robert Lozier, James Whitmore, and Stephanie Kramer in a saga of power, passion, and the presidency. My God, is it true? In two weeks, you'll live the secret of America's favorite son. The three base hits and watch Oral Hershiser shorten up as if to bunt. Twice he does that base hit, fakes the bunt and hits it, and now he pulls one down the third base line. That's the first time a pitcher has had three hits in a World Series game since Art Neff did it in 1924. And the really interesting thing for Oral Hershiser, certainly a night to remember anyway. And think back to how the evening started for him. As he was warming up in the Dodger bullpen, his mother and father threw out the first pitch. What a night. You think he looks up and says, how you think I'm doing, Mom? What a night he's had is right. Another interesting thing, they showed Magic Johnson a little a few moments ago. There is something developing in the World Series, which is a little surprising. You know how you talk about the home court advantage? If the Dodgers win tonight, and they're leading 6-0 in the seventh inning, it would be the 12th straight victory for the home team in the World Series. Minnesota-St. Louis last year was something, and here it is again. So far, well, straight if they hold on. And, of course, that's also encouraging for Oakland because they're going home to play three. 0-1 to count to Hatcher. Single to left, single to center. Hit back to the box was aboard when Marshall hit his home run in the third inning. 0 and 1. Pretty good 
pitch. Eric Plunk. There's Magic Johnson taking in the ball game. Eric Plunk. He's out of Wilmington, California. Big fella. 6'5", 210. He's the hardest thrower on that staff. Oh, and two to Hatchet. Boy, he is 6'5", 210. Fouled away. He came over in the Ricky Henderson deal, and you just saw the curveball he throws. He can be wild high. You have to make him throw strikes, but when it comes to a fastball, he'll be 95, 96 when he's got his good fastball. One thing that was encouraging for him, and as you mentioned, his control has been a problem. It seems to go hand in hand when you throw that hard. In his last nine appearances, which meant 17 innings during the regular season, he only walked three batters. And of course, if he starts throwing strikes, he's really going to be a room full. Great name for a pitcher, oh, Eric Plunk. Plunk. Love it. One and two. Half swing. See you later, Hatch. One away. It's that rising fastball just exploded. That's that four seamer that rises. And it's tough to lay off because it's right in your eyes and you see it so good. He starts, he decides not to, but oh, went too far. So Hatcher, who is certainly not a strikeout hitter, you blow him away, and that's a tribute to your stuff. And now here's Marshall. Who is the 0 and 2 nightmare hitter for Tony La Russa. He struck out 0 and 2 in the first inning, hit an 0 and 2 pitch for a three run home run in the third inning, and then Tony saw him hit an 0 and 2 pitch for a triple. That was as hard as he's thrown since he's been in there. He just blew it right by him. No balls, one strike. Breaking ball. Imagine after that now, last ball to come back and he's 0-2 again. All right, now, now, if he gets near the plate, it's just bad pitching. He's got to throw it over his head or he's got to bounce that ball up here. Let's see what they do. No balls, two strikes for the fourth time tonight. Okay. All right, okay. Because I tell you, <laughs> he's liable to swing at anything and just nail it. One and two to Mike Marshall. Triple and a home run, three RBIs. Okay, you can see now why they think so highly of Eric Plunk. Boy, he throws hard. And he can be wild high, but it looks so good, you're going to chase it. He takes care of Hatcher and Marshall, and you can be at the other end of this. It's just a fastball, high, hard one, and he just blew it right by him. So two down in the seventh inning, and John Shelby grounded out twice, struck out. If it's around the plate, he's usually after it. Tell me that the curveball doesn't curve. Oh, and one. He throws a high fastball to get Marshall, and it comes back with that downer. Six nothing Dodgers in the seventh. Cassie, Hubbard, and Weiss do up in the eighth. That is the nightmare spot for Shelby. Up and away. He has rarely ever made contact up there. He's not going to make contact if he throws another one there because he, he's not only missing it, he's behind it. Well, he tried to get there. He got a little high. One and two. At 6-5, coming down off that slope. He probably winds up close to being only 55 feet away from home plate. I think if he throws the curveball now, he's got him because it's going to be like dropping. Fouled away. The other thought, talking about where the pitcher winds up in his delivery, 50-some-odd feet, and I thought about it this morning, how terrifying it must be to pitch to Jose Canseco. Oh. Now, remember that line drive home run? Supposing that ball had been hit right back at the pitcher. He would have had just a pair of shoes there. No, nothing else. Oh. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. The most terrifying looking hitter I have ever seen. I know what you're going to say. Frank Howard. Yeah, no question about it. But I'll tell you what, Canseco will do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to swing, and there'll be a grease spot, two shoes, and you'll bronze him and put him on your rear view mirror. Two and two to John Shelby. How about that poor Lee Walls when they were playing with the Dodgers? If we look at Canseco and Howard was hitting, and he missed the squeeze sign. And he swung away and hit a foul ball. He was laying on the ground. And when he fell down and the trainer came there, he said, am I alive or dead? 
I mean, that's dangerous. Yeah, he was scary. Uh, two balls, two strikes. Remember at the start of the show, we showed you the dent in the center field camera that was made by a ball hit by Canseco last night. There's the camera. The dent is in the lower right-hand corner, and Jimmy Mott had him autograph it. Imagine hitting a ball that hard. Three and two. Got him. And he came inside to take care of Shelby, who is struggling and goes 0 for 4. Impressive inning for Eric Plunt. Strikes out the side. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Chevy Cavalier. With all the fun it gives you, it just could be one of the best bargains you've ever driven. When it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. The washerless design makes it last and last. Delta Faucet. We're first because we last. Xerox fax machines not only send your document, but let you know it got there and guarantee delivery. And you thought we only made great copiers. Team Xerox. We document the world. Seating message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Earlier, I was talking about a couple of fellows I felt badly for. Tim Cruz of the Dodgers, Mike Sharperson, unable to play. And here's another good guy who's been deprived of a chance to play, Matt Young, who lives in nearby Pasadena, pitched for the Dodgers last year. And he had the Tommy John operation about five and a half weeks ago. He's got a big zipper inside his left elbow. And I pray that he'll be able to come back because he's 29 years old and a super guy, Matt Young. In the eighth, six nothing Dodgers. And Ron Hassey grounded out, fly to left. Jose Gonzalez is now in right field for the Dodgers. So Mike Marshall comes out. There's Jose. Right. Is this the first World Series where we have two Jose's in right field in a night game in Southern California? On natural grass. You got it. <laughs> Chopper foul on the count 0 and 2. Dodgers six runs, 10 hits, and one error. The A's no runs, three hits, and you're looking at them. There's the attack right there. It looks good to see him blow that bubble instead of chewing that tobacco. The Cobra. Ball one, one and two. Interesting when the Dodgers had their scouts explaining the various members of the Oakland A's and how to pitch to them and what to expect offensively from them. What they did, I think, is what, what you would do. They tried to familiarize the Dodgers and they would take an Oakland player and say, he's so-and-so in the National League. So everybody said, well, okay, well, who would you play and say is Jose Canseco? And they said Eric Davis, who, of course, doesn't look at all like him. He's, uh, he looks like midnight, just uh, two hands straight up. But he has that kind of ability. I tell you, you know, it would be tough when you start to think of going through a whole team like that. Who, who do you have in the National League? 
And that says it pretty well there. Eric Davis Eric and Davis, Canseco. Yeah. Jose Canseco. Cassie just trying somehow to get aboard. Remember, Hershiser has had perfect control up to here. Out away. Six nothing Dodger. They got five in the third on five hits, including a three run home run by Marshall, and the inning was started by Hershiser's single. That's something, huh? Mm -hmm. Russell listening to Joe Ferguson and moving Shelby in center. Strike three call to Ron Hassey on a pitch up. And the best you could say about it was it was a borderline pitch. And Hassey didn't think it was even close to the border. That's one of those pitches on the playground you'd say too close to take. Here it is. It looks like it just runs away from him. You can see it just start from the middle of the plate, and you can see Sosha trying to give him some help as he catches that ball and kind of shifts that glove in. Hassey doesn't believe it. I think Mike kind of pulled that pitch he a did. too on the corner. The way corner. he caught it, he didn't catch it up with the face of the glove showing the umpire. kind of caught it sideways. Here's Hubbard, and Glenn takes a pitch. One ball and no strikes. Popped up to Hershiser, grounded a third in the sixth inning. 0 for 2. Three hits, no walks, six strikeouts. And he has two singles, I mean a single and two doubles tonight with the bat. But no base on balls is really a telltale. Mm. One and one. I've never seen a pitcher in the groove that he has been in for as long as he's been in the groove. And as he got close to that record, the pressure Gee. certainly mounted. Two balls, one strike. Change took a little off it. But you know what he talks about once again with that computer he's, he has. He says in the fifth inning, he says, I regroup and I talk about a different energy level because I've settled into the game now and I don't want to get complacent and I have to tell myself I have to go to a higher level of energy. I mean, he, whether it works or not, it works for him. That's all that counts. I got a footnote to that. Typical modern day ball player. Somebody said to him after all this computer talk, what kind of a computer do you use? And he smiled and he said, I haven't signed an endorsement yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Oral. Three and two. Well, after that, I'll bet he'll get a call in the morning. <laughs> he might. Walt Weiss on deck. Missed. He could be tiring now. Remember, he went three and two to Hassey and barely got a strike. Then he goes three and two to Hubbard and walks him. So the needle is approaching empty, and you can bet Lasorda will watch him carefully. He had Jay Howell get up in the seventh inning. Now, it's not that he's made so many pitches in this game, only 84 pitches, but this is the end of a long, long year. And I'll tell you another thing he's doing as we look at that bullpen, he's starting to ask for a new ball just a little more than he did early in the game. That usually tells you something. Here's Walt Weiss, 0 for 2, swinging at the first pitch. You got to feel he might be tiring. You would think he would be tiring. He just walked the man. But... If he hits the ball, hits a ground ball, you're helping him out. Make him work. Ground ball, and it's to Woodson. He goes to Griffin. Back to Woodson too late. So a 3-6 force play, and you have two out in the eighth inning. The Dodgers have turned two, and they've come close on a couple. Woodson, he gives a good throw. I mean, Hubbard, not in a way at all. Griffith will flick that bag, and he just doesn't get enough on that throw. Watch Woodson come off that bag. He was off the bag, so not even close. And now you'll hear the boos in the background, and they are directed at Don Baylor. Remember when Don made the statement about how Oakland wanted to play the best, and since the Mets had won 100 games in the National League,
No, and they read the papers. He has really been some kind of a good luck charm, though, wherever he goes. Bruce Harris, after the uh, League Championship Series, asked him, he said, where are you going next year? I want to know who's going to win. Well, a word on Baylor, a dead low ball hitter. And he's up against a, kind of a sinker ball pitcher, although he's tiring and the ball's coming up a little. And Russell has the outfield with Shelby shaded a little to left center. the quote that really got him in hot water. Since everybody tries to jam him, he gets hit a lot, as you no doubt know. Weiss goes trailing 6 nothing and steals it. But the simple reason, the old adage in baseball, if they're going to give it to you, take it. And the Dodgers were giving it to him, so he took it. Woodson was way behind him and Sachs and Griffin way back. You could have walked down there. Baylor has been hit 267 times in his career. One and one to Don. 39 years old. Two out, eighth inning, six nothing Dodgers. In there. A surprise because that's kind of his area to hit. But I tell you, it's a tough pitch to hit because it's on that outside corner, kind of sinking. And unless you make up your mind, you're going to drive into the opposite field. It's a ground ball. He's got him in great shape now. He can do whatever he wants as far as setting up the pitcher going after him. Stay outside or go inside to set up the 2 2. Let's see where Socha sets up. One and two. Fouled away. Upstairs, off to the right, out of play. Don has been playing professional baseball since 1967. Then he first came up to the big leagues in 1970. He's heard just about every kind of a crowd reaction there could be. Socia wants to make sure what Hershiser wants to do because I thought that last pitch was really too good a pitch. Against Baylor, Hershiser has picked it up a little bit. 80 miles, 88, 89. The last pitch was 90 miles per hour. I'd almost, I'd almost look for a pitch in the dirt. I would too. I see if he chased it at least to the outside part of the plate. One and two. There it is. Half swing, got him. When it comes to doing business worldwide, you gotta think in global proportions. You gotta know how the world turns, because you want it to turn your way. You gotta speak the language. You gotta travel with a fast crowd. It's a big world out there. You gotta do everything you can to make it smaller. This reminder from Federal Express, that it's not just the package, it's your business. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? What do we do now? For the man who enjoys the best of all worlds, Old Spice Liquid Stick, a new antiperspirant that combines the smoothness of a roll-on with the speed of a stick. Old Spice Liquid Stick, the world's most advanced form of protection. You've seen Ford do this for years. But now there's a big new Chevy with enough power to not only haul tons of trucks up this mountain, but also tow away the entire mountain. The advanced full-size Chevy. No wonder when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. What smooth is? You gotta stop and taste the high life. Smooth is the sensation of cracking open a cold Miller High Life. Smooth is the anticipation of that first mouthful hitting the back of your parched throat. Smooth is the feeling of a beer that goes down easy, never bitter. Stop and taste the high life. Smooth is knowing how good that first Miller High Life tasted and that it's time to enjoy another. 
Witness thoroughbred racing as it's never been seen before through the eyes of the world's great cameramen. Next Saturday, only on NBC Sports World. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia flying serenely in the night over Dodger Stadium where the Dodgers holding on to a 6 to nothing lead and it would appear to mean the 12th consecutive victory in the World Series by the home team. And that appears to be the real hope that the Oakland A's have. They're going back over to Oakland. Bob Welch will be pitching. If that continues, uh, we'll still have that great series everybody expects. Bob Welch in the Coliseum, by the way, was 13-4 and four this year, which is why he has been saved for Game 3. That's going to be quite a confrontation, Bobby going against all his old buddies. And do they know him? And they, he knows them. Talking about old buddies, Rick Honeycutt comes out of the bullpen to pitch here in the eighth inning. A strike. Honeycutt, along with Welsh, in fact, I guess if you examine the trades that involve the, the Dodgers and A's who have changed uniforms, that's a fly ball to right. It was not only a great trade for each team, but each team traded away very popular players. And that makes a difference on the ball club. You know, if a guy's a troublemaker, uh, hardly anything is said, and you hate to see the good guys go. The first thing Honeycutt did, and several of the others, when, when they arrived here in the ballpark, they were in Lasorda's office. Well, I remember Stewart going in there and serving mm -hmm. him because he had that, uh, when Bob uh, Costas was doing that uh, Eat the Meal with, La with Lasorda's show, and uh, Stewart came in and had some fun with him. Honeycutt has a great smile, soft-spoken, modest, and is one of the great competitors on the mound. You would never know it if you met him. He's so easygoing, but not when he's at work, and he's working. Oh, and one. Honeycutt working on Jeff Hamilton who was robbed of two hits tonight. He could easily be two for three, except for Walt Weiss. Good sinker, one and two. See, that's where statistics are kind of misleading. He's 0 for 7, but if it wasn't for Weiss, as you just mentioned, he'd have himself a couple base hits and maybe be on his way, but they say, man, he's not hitting at all. Yeah, Walt Weiss has been sparkling. One ball, two strikes. Fouled off. One of the great things about Honeycutt is he he knows his limitations and that's tough to do you're a big leaguer you think well, I can go out there and get anybody but he knows he can get you but only with certain pitches thrown at his space and rhythm and time and everything else he always pitches within himself that's very hard to do yeah no ego trip with him fouled away because the comics all want to be singers and the singers want to be comics and pitchers who use finesse want to be hard throwers last night's starting pitcher Tim Belcher came from Oakland to the Dodgers Rick Honeycutt went the other way one ball two strikes Honeycutt was in two LCS with the Dodgers but he was not in the World Series he appeared in 83 and in 85 83 with the Phillies 85 always remembered as the Jack Clark series see you later Hamilton two down Sleep, sitting quietly in the corner very prominently displayed last night and as we mentioned we have nothing but admiration for the way he handled himself because of this man's dramatic home run figure they'll see some more of each other before this one is through I would think so strike to Griffin Eckersley in the pregame show made a profound statement. He said, you really know the character of a ball player by his failure and what he does when he has to come back, and I'll be back. What Tony La Russa has done tonight is air out the bullpen a little. After Storm Davis, it's been Gene Nelson, Kurt Young, Eric Plunk, and now Rick Honeycutt. Good breaking ball. That's that slider. It looks like a fastball right over the plate, and you saw Griffin swing at the air angrily. It looks just like a fastball, and then it's inside. And meanwhile, the star of the game, without a doubt, Oral Hershiser on deck. He's been all world tonight. Shut out, three hits. One and two to Alfredo. There's that 
slider again. Oh, it's not a Steve Carlton slider, anything like that. But it still is tough. But he's getting it in a good spot, and it is biting. It, the slider that really gets you in trouble, the one they call a slider, and he has a flat one. In fact, that's the one that Eckersley threw to uh, Gibson. It just got in the strike zone. It was flat. This one bites. Look at it break down, across, and down. He saved seven games during the year, used sparingly. Two balls and two strikes to Alfredo Griffin. The Dodgers with five in the third, one in the fourth. That's not a runaway against Oakland, but Oral Hershiser has just been magnificent, and that's the story. He's got a three-hit shutout. Two and two. Sinker away, so what a number he did on Alfredo Griffin. Sliders down and in, a sinker away. How will you live in the next century? Suddenly, life will be more comfortable, smoother, and quicker. Introducing the new 1989 Buick Century with premium features you expect from the best-selling Buick on the American road. All at a price that will let you enter the next century very comfortably. The great American road belongs to Buick. When the clock Today it seems young parents have less time and a lot more to worry about. If I were a young father today, I'd want to know that my government wasn't blind to the changes in my life. I'd want my new president to be in touch with the things that are important to me and, and to my family. That's not a Democratic concern. It's not a Republican concern. That's a father's concern. Now, no doubt about it. 
He gave up a three and two count and got a strikeout to Hassey in the eighth. Now Jesse Orosco has joined Howell in the bullpen. He went three and two and walked Hubbard and got out of it. And now he surrendered his second walk. Look, my Lasorda, I can't help but think before and at the workout day, how he was talking about his ragtag team and how they're overmatched and how they're overwhelming the, the underdogs, but uh, we'll be here to show up. A lot of people talking about Oakland A's in four in this series, and they're looking at being down by two. And he's missing now. Sosha's trying to find something to start him off with the curveball, even though he is a first ball fastball hitter. He's just trying to find a strike is what he's trying to find. He's struggling. The runner goes since they're not holding him. It's a strike. That's a second time. Remember, they let Weiss go in the eighth inning. Now they turn Lansford loose since the first baseman Woodson is way back. They're not interested in him. Paranoski's the man. If he can spot a flaw in the mechanics, Ron with his chin in his hand will be out to the mound. One ball, one strike. Chopper to third, a look at second, and they get the out at first. And of course, that's a perfect double play ball if Lanford were not at second base. One out in the ninth. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer and director of tonight's game, Harry Coyle, produced by John J. Filippelli and George Finkel. Pre-game produced by Les Dennis, pre-game and replay director Andy Rosenberg, replay producer David Neal, technical directors Lenny Stucker and Marilyn Altman. That's right. This crowd seemed to think if we make some noise, maybe we can perk him up and get behind him, and since then he's gotten the ball over the plate. 0-1, oh the count to Jose Canseco. Seco doesn't believe it. And now the crowd using their own energy trying to will a little extra stamina to Hershiser. Trying to use jumper cables from the crowd to Hershiser. Get a little energy in there. 0-2 oh to Jose Canseco. Flied to right, struck out, and flied to center. Some in the crowd, many in the crowd, on their feet. Ground ball to short. Alfredo perfectly positioned to get him. Two out in the ninth. And now it's a case of everybody up. A crowd of 56,000 at Dodger Stadium tonight. And standing in the way of a shutout for Hershiser is the big Dave Parker. Oral had eight shutouts during the regular year, was brilliant in the league championship series, and here he goes now to get Parker. Parker, three for three, all three of the Oakland hits. Two singles to center and a single to right. He's going to go off the full windup, I think, man. Yep, he's not going to pay any attention to Carney Lansford. Wrinkled high, ball one. really tells you a lot about the com command that he's had. A hundred pitches and he's one out away from a complete game, a shutout victory. And normally you'd see maybe 130 pitches. In there. One and one. And it gets louder here now. Breaking balls, two of them. He has done what he has done so well all year. Throwing strikes, throwing ground balls, and he's faced only four batters over completely stayed away from the fastball and right now he's walking behind the mound and what he's doing is regrouping deciding do I get him now or do I get him on the next pitch that was one of the meanest curveballs he's thrown all night well he had it in a great spot and that even makes it look meaner and now the chant Oro Oro one and two He 
shaking him off. He knows what he wants to do when he walked behind the mound. He decided, and now he's going to come with it. One ball, two strikes. Chinese calendar, but it's the year of the Hershiser, it's, the year of the Bulldog. It certainly is, and I don't think any of those strikes that he made on Parker were really in the strike zone. He placed it so well, and you saw it all when you saw Paranowski and Hershiser kind of embrace. And a somewhat chastened Oakland ball club that won 104 games, blew away Boston in the championship series, now must go home and regroup. the first pitcher to throw shutouts in the league championship series and the World Series on a game that saw his mother and father throw out the first ball. The new Buick Riviera. It's a classic all over again. The road has been waiting. You're anticipating the spirit you felt way back when. Riviera is back. A classic. Tartar Control Aquafresh will knock you over. It reduces ugly tartar and more. It also helps remove plaque, fights cavities, and tastes great. New Tartar Control Aquafresh. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice Blue Aqua Velva. There's something about today's Aqua Velva, man. So you still think linemen are dumb? The new Canon SureShot Ace with remote control puts you in your own pictures. You ought to be in pictures. You're wonderful to see. You ought to be in pictures. The Canon SureShot Ace. Get in on the fun. After you've produced the yearly report in record time and made color part of your winning proposal, you'll know why Canon is the most popular copier in America. From personal to color laser copying, the choice is Canon. Promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Oral Hershiser strikes out eight, shuts out the A's on three hits. He has three hits, and Mike Marshall hits a three-run home run. Needless to say, tonight's NBC Miller Lite player of the game is Oral Hershiser. His mother and dad threw out the first pitch. He threw out the last. Miller Lite, happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Oral Hershiser to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Friends, the 1988 World Series has been brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. The great American road belongs to Buick. By Miller High Life, brewed to be smooth, never bitter. Takes time to make, time to enjoy. And by Goodyear Certified Auto Service, nobody fits you like Goodyear. And with that, let's meet the man of the hour, Oral Hershiser, and go to Marv Albert. All right, Vin, and the dream season does continue uh, for Oral Hershiser as the chance of Oral Bellow uh, from the crowd. An outstanding game tonight, but forget about the pitching. Three hits, two doubles, and a single. Any truth to the report that uh, once you uh, pitch in Oakland, that uh, when they use the designated hitter, it, it will not be for you? Well, I don't know. I think Mike Davis or whoever's going to be our DH is going to bat for me, but I was just fortunate to get the bat on the ball tonight. I, you know, I had a bastard play out there one time, and I hit a ball down the line, and I curved ball in, and I then chinked one down the line there for a double to score a run, Alfredo. So here's a slider in. I just tried to get my bat on the ball, unfortunately pulled it down the line. What meaning was it for you to see your parents throw out uh, the first ball to get the evening underway? Well, 
I was just trying for it not to break my concentration at first, and then I said, forget it. There, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I went out there and, and gave my dad a handshake and said goodbye to my mom, and, and then I tried to get my game face back on. But it's just fantastic to have them being Little League Parents of the Year. They, they deserve it more than anybody because they don't just have it because I'm in the big leagues, but they really did work hard in the Little League. Now, the Dodger rotation plans call for you again in Game 5. If there is a Game 5, they're chanting sweep here, but I know you expect that uh, this series will go to a Game 5. And then Lasorda said, should there be a Game 7, if you wanted the ball with two days rest, you would get it. So it's rubber arm, Oral Hershaw. Well, I, you know, we'll have to see what goes on. Uh, game five might even be a little soon, depending on how those other games go. Maybe they'll save me to pitch back home here in Dodger Stadium. But you never know. Uh, I just think... Uh, that I'll go and see how my arm feels. Going into uh, tonight's game, what was your greatest fear concerning the Oakland Athletics? I think just pitching to Jose Canseco with a lot of men on base. I think uh, when McGuire is up there first and second, I really bear it down on him because he, one swing, can be back in the game. All right, 23 game winner, Oral Hershiser, outstanding in the National League Championship Series and opens with a, a solid effort tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, let's get back to Ben and Joe. Well, to give you an idea, we'll take another look at that breaking ball that rang up the big left-hand hitter, Dave Parker, as Hershiser with eight strikeouts in command all evening. I think that's the key word right there, command. Even with Parker, you saw him go behind the mound and talk to himself. I got two strikes and know exactly what I want to do. He shook Sosha off, and he made his pitch, and uh, he just snapped the curveball off out of the zone, and that was good enough. And here comes Tommy Lasorda, who's 2-0, and, and a lot of people expect him to be 0-2. That's right. Right. And a reminder, Tuesday night, Game 3 of the World Series in Oakland starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on NBC Sports. And remember also, the last 12 consecutive victories in the World Series has been by the home team. So if the A's need a lift, there it is for them when we go Tuesday night at the Coliseum. For Joe Garagiola, this is Vin Scully saying good night from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, where the town belongs to Oral, and the Dodgers shut out the A's six to nothing. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.